Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 7, Episode 5. Today we're talking about Leprechaun 3 from 1995, directed by Brian Trenchard Smith. And is this truly the best Leprechaun sequel? I don't know, we're gonna find out. I'm Joe Lascola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to the dumpster. Viva Las Vegas! Hey! A uh, Viva Lubden. Yes, Viva, yeah. Viva Lubden. Lubden. Viva the Starfish. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, long running lore on this show uh, with the Leprechaun character, lovingly known as Lubden on this show. Yeah. Because I read it in a fucking comic or something that that's what his real name is five years ago. I think it was the tie in comic for the first movie where it named him. Uh, one of the movies. One of them? Yeah. One of them. Uh, but if you're a long time watcher slash listener, you know all about Lubden. He's a sick mofo. Oh, dude, yeah. Uh, we didn't get any shamrock shakes this year unfortunately my local uh, mickey d's you know they got that that wick mickey d's or whatever going on they have that anime, the anime theme thing, going yeah. so i think uh the anime guys ejaculated in there before love didn't got in there so they fucked up the shamrock shake formula and uh you know the guys working there had to clean it out and fix it loved and you know was standing by smoking a cigarette waiting i don't know about that let's ask the starfish what 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 did you say i don't know dude i think she's full of that green goo well, you better get over to my local McDonald's uh, that I'm not going to reveal the location of and fill up that <laughs> ice cream machine because I need some shamrock shake. She's going to roll out of here. Uh, and also, if I somehow didn't say it in that spiel and you're not reading between the lines, yes, in the uh, movie dumpster universe, uh, the leprechaun got his dick sucked by that that starfish that's well, well, on the table. You got to and... set that up for people who don't know what the movie dumpster universe <laughs> is. It's the it's the movie. It's the the show, yes. our show, the podcast, Movie Dumpster Podcast in show universe where we connect all these movies. And Lubden has been a long, or the Leprechaun TM has been right. a long running uh, a character character in, yeah, in, no, yeah. in said universe. And it has, he has very deep lore. Um, and it goes all the way back to the unluckiest Leprechaun, or a very uh, unlucky Leprechaun, excuse right. me. Right. Uh, where the War Roger <laughs> Corman classic where, Le well. where, where Warwick Davis plays a Leprechaun that's not an evil Leprechaun, he plays a good Leprechaun. Right, in his fourth or fifth now uh, <laughs> time playing that kind of character, I think but he's, sure. I think he's actually making it. He actually makes that movie after Leprechaun 4. It's either 3 or 4. Yeah. I think we might have gotten it wrong on the actual episode, yeah. or I got it wrong. It's but... right in the pocket there. I think it comes out in 96 or 98. Yeah. This is 95. Uh, well, it's definitely post 3, for yeah. sure. Post 3, I think it's post 4, too. But there's a, there's a starfish in that episode, and we have this long-running joke where right. that... That starfish sucks off Lubden right in his right in his trousers. There's later hosen, I think, and, and it, it sometimes lives in there. Originally, it was Granny Van Dam's because she's always had that kind of running uh, sex in brothel kind of uh, element attached to her. Yeah. That's my job, don't you know? Uh, so she's still actually on the hunt for that. So you better not let any uh, crazy old lady. Ladies in here, Joe, especially if they're in wheelchairs or wearing bathrobes, or just have no clothes on whatsoever. Also true, but long story short, yeah. uh, that starfish uh, milks Lubden, and then that starfish gets milked into the McDonald's Shamrock Shake machines, and for all of us to enjoy across the world. Right, getting us back to the whole point of why I went off on that tangent. Yes. Thank you very much, Yeah, reeled Joe. it right in. The MDU lore is real. <laughs> uh, and there's actually some more MDU lore in this episode. Uh, we'll get to that as we we're start gonna, talking we're gonna, about. We're going to roll the dice on that, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, and, and London's going to roll a doobie like back in the hood. <laughs> He's going to smoke some of those uh, shamrocks and see what happens. But if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster and get an ad-free audio version of the show for only $2 a month. We also have some commentary tracks and some live watch-alongs for the 5 and $10 tiers with some other dumpster goodies for you. So um, if you're so inclined... Give us a shot. Support your favorite show. And for no money at all, leave a like on this video if you're watching here on YouTube and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed, please hit that button and uh, then you'll know every time a new episode is out. And uh, if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, leave us that five stars. Maybe write a review. It really does help. Get the word out on the show. Get us into more eyeballs, eardrums, everything in between. And if you want to keep up with the Dumpster Boys whereabouts, uh, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on your favorite social media platform. Or you can go to MovieDumpsterPodcast.com and see our schedule and what shows we got coming up. We got a great show coming up with Tapes from the Crypt at the Philomoca on April 20th. There's going to be a screening of Heavyweights followed by a live Q&A session with Sean Wine. So you don't want to miss that one. And we know some of you came out to see us at Monster Mania, and we also had some movie dumpster themed hot sauces, Sean. So um, we're gonna we're gonna hawk that real quick because it's 
St. Patrick's Day. And of course, we got to talk about it wouldn't be St. Patrick's Day without Rawhead. No. Rawhead Red, by the way. This is a homegrown, homemade, hand assembled hot sauce from your boys in the dumpster. What is this? We got raspberries with Fresno and Carolina Reaper peppers in this hot sauce. So Rawhead's going to give the old hot raspberry, baby. You know what I'm saying? He is God. Yeah, we also got our dumpster slime as well, which is our least hot sauce. And this is pineapple, jalapeno, and hot banana peppers hot sauce. Uh, we're not sure how many of each of these we have left, but if you want to grab one, you can head over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and get some yourself. So I wish uh, we could play some Irish music right now to go in theme with this film. Like every other St. Patrick's Day movie we've covered, uh, they always open up these movies with Irish music. I don't want to get copyright claimed uh, instantly on this uh, episode, but I feel like uh, in the back of your head, you're you're kind of listening to that as we get into this review. Doing the Irish jig, yeah. Uh, well, under this table, no one could see it. That's what no. I've been doing the whole time. Well, that that's yeah, it's also true, yeah. Uh, this carpet really hides the sound. D well, speaking of music... Uh, Dennis Tenney does the score for this, and it is not Irish whatsoever. Really? I didn't it's realize like, that. Dum, ding, dum, ding, dum, ding. It's, uh, it's like low-budget Danny Elfman uh, casino music. Yeah, I was going to say it's not hyper-memorable, <laughs> but it's it's fine. I remember this music You do? Okay. I, I think, yeah. Uh, out of all the things in this movie, that, that's one of the things that sticks out to me the most. I mean, to me, I mean, not to just steal your thunder on that one, but it's definitely loved in walking around Vegas. Yeah, but, I mean, that's, yeah. The, that's the funniest part. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot more screen time than Jason walking through Manhattan, that's for sure. Right, actually, there, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, let's welcome back director Brian Trenchard-Smith, shall we? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. We've, he's, been with, he's been with us on the show for such great classics as Leprechaun 4 in Space and Night of the Demons 2. Uh, two films I did not like. Uh, Leprechaun 4, on some level, at least has the weirdness factor. Uh, I didn't like it, but I would rewatch it. Again, those effects hold up like dog shit on a Blu-ray, especially when he grows big. I don't they need to revisit that transfer. They need to fix that shit. I'm gonna get to my final thought on what the best sequel oh, sure. of the Leprechaun franchise is right, at the end, because that's what the question we're answering today. Yeah, sure, sure. But I really like four. I like four better than this one. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. I mean, I, I, I definitely like this better than four. Yeah. What, what am I even saying? Go back and listen to that episode. <laughs> uh, but I still think, uh, well, we'll hold that thought. I definitely like this movie better than Night of the Demons 2. Oh, well, well that a fucking doubt. I, I don't like that movie at all, but there's, minus the snake shit. There's something about Night of the Demons 2 that I'm just not into. I mean, go back and listen to the Night of the Demons 2 episode to get my full thoughts. It hasn't really changed that much because we did discuss it on Night of the Demons 3 yeah, I think as well. You were a little uh, softer on it, I think, since that second one. But even that second one, I don't remember you being that... Not not loving it, but not being that harsh on it. No, I just I wish it was a little bit better. Sure, you know, uh, it is. Speaking of transfers, it is kind of cool that all three of those films they get the 4K treatment just on that note. Which is crazy to me because Night of the Demons one, two, and three have brand new Blu-ray releases, and I don't think Leprechaun has a real proper restoration. That's I what know I'm there's saying. A, I know there's a Blu-ray. Well, Lionsgate owns all of these films now. They put out that compilation Blu-ray, which I feel like most Leprechaun fans probably have already picked up. If not, it's usually pretty cheap. Do you have it? I have it. How it, are the transfers? They're good. I'm just saying, like, specifically for, I didn't rewatch it for this viewing, but when I watched it, when we did that review a couple years back, yeah. I, I had bought the Blu-ray set at the time, and I just remember specifically, just, they didn't go crazy like the My Bloody Valentine 4K, where they fixed up all those effects. It's just like, I remember specifically that movie, the effects were just like, ooh, baby. Like real bad? They didn't hold up great. And I mean, that movie <laughs> He's already cheesy, whatever. They're in space. Don't overthink it, Sean. Uh, but I thought that this one looked pretty good. Uh, the only time that I thought things looked bad was just because they were always going to look bad. There was only so much you're going to do with the first uh, direct-to-video Leprechaun movie. Uh, but I think, generally speaking, especially the practical effects, uh, hold up really well in this film. I think so. Well, all the practical effects. I mean, it's Gabe Bartolo's coming back again for this. And if there's one constant through these movies, through these specific, the Trimark movies. Right. Uh, specifically, it's Gabe Bartalos and, and Warwick Davis bringing the goods each and every single time. I mean, they launched. We're going to get to that yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. a second. But um, I want to jump back to Brian Trenchard-Smith real quick. Sure. There's something I don't think we've mentioned about him, but he's also he's he's not a bad director at all. Uh -huh. And he's actually directed a bunch of stuff that I didn't even realize he did. Um, he did BMX Bandits. 
Have you ever oh, seen that? Oh, no, no, no. I did see that. It's though, pretty good. Yeah. Um, and oh. the quest with um, the, the I forget it. I always forget his name, but Elliot from uh, E.T. <laughs> okay. Which which at the time was a pretty big deal because he was in E.T., so that, sure. I mean, that was a huge star at the time. Uh, but he also does Dead End Drive-In, which is a, which is another good one that we should, we should probably check out. Um, but he also did this movie, Atomic Dog. Now, I've never seen it, or maybe I've rented, I think I rented it one time, but I can't for the life of me remember it. I When I saw the cover, I was like, fuck, I need to go back and rewatch okay. this because it's... It's like this green cover. It's so obnoxious and I love it. It looks like a husky or something with a oh, fucking, God. with like a big like D in its mouth and it says like, or a big A. It's biting one of the letters. Oh, okay. And it says like atomic dog. Huh. Um, so it's like, it, I don't know what, cashing in on men's best man's best friend or something? Uh, that might be in the, uh, we, we never actually pulled the trigger on this event month idea because I just don't even know if anyone would watch it. But if we ever do the fucking, uh, the, the, the dogs in something, dogs in movies month, maybe that's one that'll get tackled in some capacity. There's a couple on the list, folks, believe us. When animals we, have, a, we have a list. When animals attack? Uh, I think it was specifically a dog thing. A dog that, one? that John Voight one where he's the dog and Bob Clark directed it. It's been oh a my thought God. for where a couple like, years. Where he's like, uh, it's like the White House dog or something, uh, the maybe. president's dog. Maybe that atomic dog. Maybe add that to the list of yeah. dog movies. Yeah. So yeah, there's not too much cooking with Leprechaun Three. It was literally just one of those things where it was like, we got a franchise, baby. We're Vidmark Entertainment, Trimark Entertainment, and um, it's you know the the first Leprechaun movie was a huge success. Um, despite all odds, which I'm going to talk about in a second, because I want to talk about this lovely book that I, okay. I just finished. But uh, just real quick with Lepre Leprechaun 3. Um, this is, like you said before, this is the first one that goes direct to video. Right. Now, the first movie was supposed to go direct to video, and they ended up doing theatrical release. And the second one did so well that they put it out theatrically as well. Uh, which is like, then why doesn't the third one go theatrically? After viewing it, I could maybe think of a few reasons why. Uh, just from a production standpoint, uh, I guess is what I mean by that. But yeah, it's kind of surprising. I mean, I don't know how deep you're going to go into this in a second when you start talking about uh, I Need Me Gold, the yeah. book there. Uh, but I always had remember reading, and I probably talked about this on the two commentary tracks we did for one and two on Patreon uh, for five and ten dollar tiers, uh, <laughs> patreon.com slash movie dumpster. But that first film originally was conceived as a PG film, yes, uh, and then was changed kind of in post production. They added some more gore to the kills, they probably even shot a few more things, but that wasn't it, it kind of turned into something else and then became this huge franchise. Well, huge, maybe in air quotes. I mean, it, they did get what six or seven films and a couple remakes, so I guess I consider that huge. This movie, I, th this franchise made a shit ton of money. right, yeah, yeah, but it's just kind of crazy to me that those first two movies, the first one's supposed be PG turns into something else. The second one, as far as I know, was R from the get-go, and I think that's why it works so well. Uh, plus, that's, the plot's really good. And then this one is just like, uh, what am I trying to say here? It just goes direct to video after all this success. And I, I, was this rated R? It was rated R. Okay, this is okay. the highest grossing direct to video movie of 1995. I guess because people were wondering why wasn't this in theaters? I got to rent it. I mean, uh, again, there we were on the LEP train, dude. It, it's, it's 1995. <laughs> right, okay. Because the first one comes out in 92. I, that is insane right? to me, so, right? Yeah. I want to answer your question about okay. why this um, went direct to video, or at least my opinion, especially like towards the mid 90s. And a big part of that is um, from what I learned reading this book uh, by B. Harrison Smith, uh, The Making of the Movie Leprechaun I Need Me Gold, which. I cannot recommend this book enough. Um, if you haven't seen this or checked it out yet, it came out last year, right before the. He mentions it in the book, and as he's writing it, that's how I have frame of reference, but it came out right as Avatar 2, on the eve of <laughs> Avatar 2 being released. Okay. So, so it's pretty, it's fresh. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a pretty new book, and I got it last year, um, but I didn't get to it last year, so sure. I was like, shit, we got another Leprechaun episode coming up, I gotta, I gotta hit it up. That being said, try Vidmark Entertainment... started their Trimark brand, which was their theatrical production, in-house production shit. Huh. So Vidmark was the distribution company. Okay, got Like, it. they're the people who picked up Warlock from New World Pictures and then released that theatrically, but they didn't put any money into it. They bought the movie, released it in theaters, it did well, and then they released it on uh, video, and it did well. Solid purchase on their part. Leprechaun was the first movie that they, that they make in-house, like, under their production okay. company, Trimark. Thank you. 
And it was always set to go direct to video because they couldn't lose because of the market at the time. Mm. And what I mean by that is video sales at that time, that pocket right there from the 80s to the mid 90s, you could always make your money back on video. Well, look at the porn industry, especially. Well, but that, yeah. Well, that too. Yeah, yeah. You could rent it and take it home and buy it if you wanted it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's the same thing with. Um, it's the same thing with these with these movies. You can rent these movies, and that's where a lot of the money came from. A lot of the money came from uh, not the theater sales or the ticket sales. It coming to home video and people renting the shit out of it, and people and video stores buying units and then and then renting them. Mm. Um, and then of course uh, alternate cuts that got put to cable, and then they made a shit ton of money on cable too. So you either rent the movie or you watch it on TV. That was the only way to do it. And we grew up. In that era. Yeah, yeah. We grew up in that era where you couldn't just go, you either go to the movies, but you're too little to go to the movies <laughs> well, by yourself yeah, right, to right. see the film, or you rent it from the video store or you watch it on TV. And when you watch it on TV, it's probably cut if it's on USA uh, or sci-fi or something. Well, yeah, you didn't necessarily always have uh, HBO no. or something. At, if you at, were at lucky, the, you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta jump up and pause the commercials. I mean, now you wish you never did. Yeah. But at the time, you didn't know any better, so you're <laughs> jumping up when that that UPN logo comes up or that frog starts dancing on the screen. <laughs> there was no YouTube. There no. there there was no uh, Tubi. There was none of this shit. You either watched it when it came on TV or you went to the video store to rent it. I, I don't know how and we fucking survived. Uh, I'm saying that in my mid-30s. I probably sound pretentious, but holy shit. Oh, man. Horrible time, Stone Age, for technology I don't people. think so. I think it was great. For movie fans. I think it was great because I can keep up with the fuck it, with what was coming out. Uh, I guess that is true. Uh, I mean, when you think about it, there is so much, so much shit coming out that just comes out and people are just making shit and making shit. There's so much white noise. True. It's very hard to dig through to find the gems. You almost have to literally put like blinders on to find what you're looking for, like intentionally. That's I mean, a good point. How many times have you been sitting on Netflix and being like, I don't know what to watch? Or you're on Tubi and it's you're like, like I don't meme, know right? what to watch. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what the fuck to watch because there's so much, there's too much shit. You know what I mean? And that has to do with also like TV too. When, I mean, we've talked about this before, sure, but just sure. briefly, I want to take it, I want to, uh, you know, digress in, into, um, you know, streaming. TV shows and mm. how they were all released at one time and you can binge watch it over. I used to get so pissed off because people like, oh, what was it? I think it was Daredevil was all released at once and I didn't get a chance to watch it. And oh, that was, spoilers. That was the first time that I, I got impacted by spoilers where some, some asshole had nothing fucking going on and watched all the fucking episodes mm. on a Saturday and just spilt the fucking beans about it. And it was that, oh God, that was so aggravating to me. I remember when Stranger Things dropped. Like, they'd been doing it for a hot minute at yeah. that point, but that was one where I was like, I wasn't even that into it yet, but like, I think by the second season, then I was really into it, so I was like, I gotta watch this the day it comes out or I'm gonna get spoiled. It's like a video game. I gotta play the whole game or I'm gonna get spoiled. I've kind of broken myself of yeah. that, well, but I totally to. got that, get that mentality because you just, you want to get fucked, especially if it's something you're looking forward to or you just want to go in blind. It's, it's fucking, hard. It's fucking stressful. Especially if you're a fan of this show where we just spoil literally every movie, yeah. but hey, sorry, I guess. It, not really. It, well, not really. <laughs> Because that's it's the show. It's a big that, that's, that's the show. But like, but just like you know, we're not doing it all together anymore. You're not. You're not like waiting. a weekly show. Yeah, you're not waiting yeah. for Friday at eight o'clock for fucking Steve Urkel to to do his thing, right? right. You know what I mean, or whatever. I mean, or. So or or UPN or something to show that movie of the week or fucking, you know, uh, something to premiere on the Sci-Fi Channel or something, you know? Something weird you've never heard of that's just on or you, you find in the TV guide. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I've seen that discourse pop up a lot more yeah. lately, especially with, not that Best Buy's where people necessarily were going to buy their DVDs. I mean, I was because, you know, credit card, cha-ching. Well. Uh, but, you know, when they got rid of that, a lot of people were like, oh, the death of physical media. And it's like, yeah, but we have like Vinegar Syndrome. We have like Error 4444. We have like all these novelty shops. And we still have the big guys like Criterion and Sony. They're not going away. <laughs> Um, Let me tell you something but, about Best Buy and their catalog of movies. Well, they weren't great to begin They've with. They've had shit for a long time. You're right. Talking, you're talking to somebody who that you that, were hunting I, probably. I fucking we're we're talking. You remember? I used to come out of Suncoast with a fucking stack oh, the, of yeah, shit the, the this list. high. Yeah, yeah. But like, Best Buy was never the place for me to be like, oh, they're gonna have all the stuff that I want. You right. know what I mean? And they were on a decline for a while, for and like a decade. But they were carrying a lot less shit throughout the whole for time. A long time. So I don't know why everybody was like, oh my God, not Best Buy, I, it's over. I think it's just kind of in the zeitgeist of collectors or people that are fans of movies in general sure. that are that are on the internet and, and trying to be part of this community or whatever you want to refer to it as. Uh, 
or, or just see that and they get nervous. And I totally understand that. But I guess my whole point, just to wrap it around to what you brought up about sure. streaming, is like streaming's really nice, but uh, you know they don't always have everything. And then it's that case of what you just said, where you got to pound through things. Where it's like with Leprechaun, let's just kind of take it back to that. It's yeah. like. I don't know if you could watch these all streaming. I mean, maybe they're on Shutter. Uh, I don't know again who owns it. Lionsgate. Lionsgate. They don't yeah. have their own streaming service, probably. No, they don't. Thank God they don't. We don't need another one. But I don't know why we haven't got these on like some special edition 4K yeah. from like Shout Factory because Something. Shout Factory always licenses like Lionsgate shit. Instead, you got to buy the Blu-ray or have those individual DVDs but it's like those for better or worse. It's like those shitty packs. And like this was such a huge thing, uh, the Pot of Gore collection. When that came out on DVD, that was like huge. Um, that, this is like back when the Puppet Master set first came out oh, God. on, on yeah, DVD. Yeah. I still have that one upstairs, too. Um, I, I hope I completed that thought about yeah. streaming. I hope that didn't just end in a uh, incomplete sentence. But No, but I, I, I think the basic takeaway was like it's so accessible now and there is this stress of keeping up with all the media oh, that's what you were saying but yeah. like but like even at the t when it first started it was very stressful and you even said that but then we've kind of separated ourselves on that because there's nothing we can fucking do about it the, yeah it's you like know? a mental struggle people yeah. that want to watch tv or movies if you're doing it through the internet you got to deal with that bullshit or pony up the cash and just buy the fucking disc yeah but I don't think I don't think physical media it's never going away is is ever going not away. in our lifetime at and least. like Target has a better selection of DVDs than it's, Best Buy ever had and it's not even great no I know but like what because you want a steel book I don't give a fuck about a steel book I used to care about that I don't care I mean yeah. it's cool if I got it but like I'm, I got I, that Mortal Kombat Annihilation yeah. Blu-ray there it was a double pack but like I care more about the movie or if you really want to if you want a steel book go to fucking Zavi or some sure, shit sure no you yeah, know yeah. So with that being said, Trimark wanted to put one of the, their first movie in the theater, and because they knew that they would make the money back on video, because that's the that was the lay of the land oh. at the time. They would have lost more money if they put it out. Okay, I was kind of thinking that. Well, they made ten million at the box office, and that wasn't that was before the video deals. Are you talking about the first one? The first one. Oh, okay. And that got was you, before the video deals, and that was before the cable, the network television deals. Right. Just to come back to the book, like sure. the book is more about filmmaking and independent filmmaking and the struggles and trials and tribulations you go through with the um with the executives and the um production company and how to get a movie made and how what what are the fucking hoops you got to jump through and the concessions you need to make and stuff does and he mention mark jones in there at all it's all about mark oh it jones. is okay good. yeah 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 and that's and, why i'm just curious that's what and, you would want to hear and like the creator of leprechaun well to just to that point i wanted to bring that up too because like we bust people's balls on the show for the sake of comedy, but yeah, like ninety. I mean, Daniel Baldwin can go eat crow, but yeah, ninety nine percent of the time we bust yeah. people's balls for the sake of comedy. But like Mark Jones is an incredible dude, and he, he's smart, and he not only smart, but like he was uh, an animator and a writer for some of our favorite cartoons as kids huh. growing up. He was one of the lead writers on fucking Scooby Doo, dude. <laughs> like the seventies, okay. like the OG. Yeah. Wow. Like. This guy was decorated before he made Leprechaun, huh. okay? And um, he got into, um, well, I'll let you read the book, but he he got into uh, Vidmark and Trimark and and by way of uh, people that he knew and producers and, and stuff like that, and they made Leprechaun, but they gave him a lot of shit for it. And he knew exactly what he wanted. He knew that he wanted Warwick Davis. He knew that it had to be makeup. He knew he had to do Gabe Bartolos' makeup. Um, and uh, he knew exactly what the movie he wanted to make and what exactly it was. Um, and, and he also was smart enough to just say, hey, I want the entire fucking rights to this character so that when you make <laughs> six sequels, I get paid for each one and don't have to lift a fucking finger. Well, I'm sure that's in the contract somewhere. But it was <laughs> a labor very smart. It was a labor of love. He knew what he was making and it was successful. And the and the studio execs were nervous about it the whole time, but they ended up making all the fucking money in the world, and, and they, got a franchise. They out wanted of it. a franchise, and they got a fucking franchise. I guess is what I'm saying. And then go all the way back to your point that that we were talking about before we started this uh, digression was <laughs> why it was Leprechaun Three Direct to Video. Probably okay. because at that time it was it wasn't financially viable to put it in theaters again after the second one didn't do as well in theater, so they just put it straight to video, and they made a shit ton of money. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Earlier, yeah. I guess I misunderstood what you were saying, but yeah, that's kind of my yeah. thought also, is that they were not going to make the money back. So it's like, fuck the thousands of horror fans, let's <laughs> just make all their money on the back end. But just to your point, too, like, he is an icon, and he, I don't... I, I don't, know there's more than thousands of people that wanted to see this. That was a very bad analogy, yeah. anyway. I, I feel like I feel like people don't... Um, I, I, you know, 
when you talk about Freddy and Jason and Michael and stuff like that, I feel like people don't mention uh, Warwick Davis as a leprechaun, but I, I would put him there. I mean, they are slasher movies. They, yeah. I, they kind of, I mean... It wasn't the original intent for this, but yeah. No, well, especially one, I yeah. mean, you could make less of an argument for that, but I, I feel like they definitely turned into, especially this film is definitely a slasher movie. Oh, into the second one. It, that was, yeah, it was over. yeah. But you're right, like, I, you don't hear as many people talk. Like, people, like, that are into horror, or like, yeah, Warwick Davis, but it's not like he was an unknown either. Like, he's done Star Wars again. He was... He was a puppet, or not a puppet, he was, uh, he was in Willow. He, he was in Willow. He, and was he was in a, Willow. He was an A-list actor. So he was well known, and he's done a ton of like small parts at that point. Yeah. Not, no pun intended, Jesus. <laughs> uh, but little like, Cops, we gotta make Little Cops. Little Cops, you were talking about on a live show. Phil with... Fondacaro and Warwick Davis in Little Cops, right. TM. Uh, Billy Barty is the stuntman or something. Billy Barty's passed away. Uh, well, this is a hypothetical anyway, oh, okay. so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Uh, it's just, so just I'm saying that because with Warwick being this character, and you could tell it's Warwick, but it's also a very iconic character, especially over these many films that he appears in. He was like slightly different in each one, which I always kind of appreciate because it's technically not the same leprechaun. But depending on who you talk to, well, right. But like you know, for someone that's nothing against Robert England, I think he is very famous now. But at the time, it's like he wasn't known for Willow. You know, he didn't have like some big film like you know Feather in His Crow. But it's like you're right, Warwick. Uh, outside of the circles of people watching this show, I feel like Leprechaun kind of gets kicked under the rug, and yeah. it's unfortunate because I think they're generally speaking pretty good. Yeah. And Warwick's great in them. He's super memorable. Oh, he's he's more memorable than fucking Michael Myers, yeah. <laughs> the most boring fucking slasher killer ever. <laughs> well, they basically made a little Freddy, is what they did, which is smart. Yeah, it's a good idea. So just real quick, just a couple uh, small things. The writer. <laughs> Of course, it, we've seen this happen time and time again, where they like try or try. Mark was like, "All right, Leprechaun in Vegas, go!" <laughs> and they like had like a fucking lottery for these people to like send scripts in, like spec scripts in. What? Yeah, that's what happened. And this guy who wrote huh. the script uh, sent in his script, and they and they picked it, but he had never seen the previous movies before. So that's why this we get that switch of lore, and there's some other yeah. shit in this. So like, I, I never really understood why the fuck you wouldn't watch previous movies in the franchise that you're writing for to write your script. I, I'll never understand that. That seems to be a theme on this show, too. Yeah. I feel like we've covered a few films where that has come up and we're just always scratching our heads. Like, what the fuck? Why? I guess they still made the fucking movie and it mostly works, but yeah, you would think just watch the movies. It's take it two or three hours. They're not that long. We posed the question in the beginning, what is the best Leprechaun sequel? Now, this is Warwick Davis's favorite leprechaun movie i mean just based on the what they have him do in this film i'm sure it was he's fucking going around vegas he's he, just being a he, he's being a laugh the entire time he's had a lot of creative control on all the movies like previous like up until this point he worked with mark on the second one or okay. the first one and he worked with the i forget the director of the second one but this was very much more the third one's very much more like comedy driven oh yeah um and that's what he liked about it so okay. but like warwick davis is a pretty funny motherfucker he had like that whole tv show with uh, uh, Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, yeah, life's too short. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not surprised he enjoyed his time in this film because, again, he's limericking like a motherfucker. Most of the limericks are pretty funny in this one. There's like one or two that are kind of dark, but they're almost always just dark comedy at the, at the worst, honestly. It's a lot of fun. It, 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 it gets a little redundant for me uh, in yeah. this one in particular, but we'll get to it. He wants his shilling! <laughs> There's one last thing I wanted to mention before we get totally uh, out of the the um you know BTS, the, yeah. the BTS here. There's a fucking director's cut of Leprechaun, the first one. Wow, where Mark Jones I think has a copy of it, and that's something that I would love to see because that because we mentioned in you mentioned in that commentary track on Patreon.com/slash Movie Dumpster of the first Leprechaun movie, um that that whole sequence with the cop was shot or requested. By the execs to be put into the movie, huh? Where he's pulled over and all that? No, where he's running through the woods and he like breaks his neck. And oh, shit. right. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a lot more funny, goofy, lighthearted Scooby Doo esque shit mm -hmm. in the movie. Like, there's a whole sequence where like Leprechaun gets like run over by a truck, <laughs> and he's like, it's like Wiley fucking Coyote like in the dirt. Like the oh. outline with like a tire mark over him. That's the PG version, I and guess. And then he gets up. Yeah, he gets up and like rides a tricycle after him. So I, oh, I, I would be. There's like 15 to 20 minutes that were cut out of that movie. So I'm very. I would love huh. to see that one day. You know what would be sick if we could. Morton Jenkel cut that bitch. Well, no, if we could call up Mark Jones and be like, uh -oh. dude, let's do a double feature. We'll show it at one of the local theaters. We'll do a director's cut of Leprechaun and we'll do Rumpelstiltskin double feature. That would be fucking banger. Mark Jones night. I have to get uh, Chris Barr involved with that yeah. one, maybe. <laughs> Midnight Madness. Could be, or somebody with a 35 millimeter projector, wow. depending. We know a few folks. We know a few folks.
So with that being said, let's get into Leprechaun 3. Can you plot crunch this for us, please, Sean? So Lubden's back. The Leprechaun is back again, uh, magically returned by somebody's stupidity. Uh, this time he's a statue and is instantly transformed back into his true self. And uh, he's in Vegas, like we've already talked about. And uh, this time he's just kind of looking for his lucky coin, one of his coins that magically just kind of roll out of his fucking cauldron on the way out of this pawn <laughs> shop. Cauldron. Like like golden... Uh, like Gollum's uh, ring, essentially. And then it's just kind of like his excuse for killing people throughout the film is that they take his coin, make wishes, and then he kind of uh, dishes out punishment. And then uh, we also have this little wrinkle where our protagonist, Scott, uh, accidentally gets some leprechaun blood inside one of his cuts. Oh, his bites. Uh, a bite that he gets from Lubden, and now he's turning into a leprechaun. And then that's also a where leprechaun uh, appears, and they battle to the death or something. <laughs> Question mark, dude. Uh, but that's basically the movie. Leprechaun in Vegas, where Leprechaun, they fight over the gold. There's some love. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Forced love angle? Yeah. This is your favorite. Um, yeah, my favorite trope in movies, <laughs> even more so than the forced love story, yeah. <laughs> ah. We'll get to Mitch and his fucking ass. <laughs> so we open up on Gupta's... Um... <laughs> Pawn shop. Oh my god, I have to comment on this. <laughs> Gupta Baggins. Yeah, Gupta Baggins. He's in fucking <laughs> Underhill. Uh, this... Well, he loses that. He picks up that shilling, like you were just saying. Oh, yeah. uh, well, he does. But yeah. this uh, actor, he's Spanish, but he's definitely wearing brown face. At one point, when this man's sweating, uh, trying to hide from the leprechaun, I swear to God, it looks like it's dripping off his face. Uh, his name is Marcelo uh, Tubert. Tubert. Uh, he's an Argentinian actor who uh, moved to Los Angeles. He's not Indian. He's doing a very uh, on-the-nose Indian accent. His name's Gupta. Uh, I don't know. That's all I'll say about it. Brian uh, Trenchard Smith, or whatever the fuck your name is, I don't know about that one. Maybe should have uh, just made him Spanish. I mean- as Or hired an Indian actor. Well, he's a brown guy playing a brown guy, so I think that's fine. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, he's also already- uh, Actually, he's not in the MDU, but he is in another film that we are fans of. He's in Tremors 2. He's Sergeant Ortega. Oh, that's which, right. Again, not Indian. No. He's not doing the accent there. But he's the guy that comes in. Well, and he's gets, Mexican in that. Yeah, yeah, he comes and gets Fred Ward. He's like the sergeant in charge yeah. and gets Fred off his ass. And he's like, what do you need? Do you need anything? Yeah. yeah he, he gives him all his yeah. shit. Yeah. But anyway... Get over that fucking hill, yeah. under hill. <laughs> uh, he's sitting there, and he's he's waiting to, basically for something to happen. And this fucking one-eyed, one-legged, one-armed one man. Yeah, flying <laughs> perfect people leader comes in. Yeah. <laughs> With this fucking sack dragging this thing in like he's got fucking bricks in a bag. He's got no leg. He's got a fucking hook hand. He's got an eye patch and a crutch. That's what I'm saying. A one-eyed, one-armed, mm -hmm. one-legged man. One-eyed, one-legged... Uh, this is like old guy, uh, merchant, uh, peddler, uh, I don't know. Character that doesn't come back and, and is just there for this one scene. I, well, he drops off this fucking leprechaun statue and he's like, it's a good luck charm. Can you give me $20 so I can get some gas and get the fuck out of here? The guy goes, I ain't even worth 10. Fine, 20. <laughs> and he's like happy as a pig and shit and yeah. just leaves. And just it's like, okay. And he's like, yeah, by the way, as he's like don't counting touch, the money. Don't touch that medallion. Whatever you do, don't touch the medallion. The second he walks out the door, ah, fuck that. Takes Pulls the medallion right off. off. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And out comes Warwick, dude. We, what I appreciate about this is we don't waste a fucking second. No, we, we are don't. right in there. Uh, and funnily enough, in the sequel to, well, actually the second sequel to this, so in the hood, yeah. a leprechaun in the hood, uh, basically same kind of setup where he's a statue with the necklace, although the necklace becomes a much more integral plot point than this film. Well. In that movie. Well, it's a pretty integral to this. It is, but they're not trying to, like, basketball uh, shoot this thing over his neck like they are in that movie. Well, there's all, well, because there's a different way to dispatch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But. This is the first film to introduce that. The medallion idea. The medallion idea, yeah. idea that he's a statue or whatever. Uh, or it can be turned to stone, rather. Yeah, it turns him to stone, and it also kind of works as a repellent against him. But yeah, he's he's out and about, and he <laughs> instantly goes after this guy Dude, with he, the shillelagh. He, no, he jumps on his back and bites his fucking ear off like yeah. Mike Tight, like Holyfield. Well, yeah, Holyfield. That's what I thought of instantly. And it, it like right at the first line that Warwick Davis gets is, "I love Indian food, so spicy." And that shit always cracked me up. Well, he bites his fucking ear, and then he yeah. takes a big, huge bite out of his foot, rips his whole big toe off. Dude, he fucking takes his big toe and rips the bites the whole thing off. He's chewing on. 
on that, and it's just like, oh, God, help me. Beats the shit out of him with the shillelagh. Beats him up with the shillelagh. So uh, he, so Gupta has the fucking medallion, and he's like, get it away from me. So he takes his gold. He's like, I'll be gone. I'll be gone from here or whatever. Drops that fucking coin, man, that shilling. <laughs> Right, because he's got the cauldron and the pot of gold, but a shilling, like I said, falls off. Yeah, and he has a hundred, exactly one hundred gold coins in his little in his little pot. I don't know about that. That looks like way fucking more than that. Personally, I mean, listen, I failed pre calculus, but I did pretty good at math in in high school. I there's more than a hundred. You there. were good at guess the jelly beans, right? Is that what you're telling me? No. Okay. Uh, but there's definitely more than 100 coins because he gets up to 99 and then he's like, ah, where's my coin? One. Where's my shilling? Yeah, there's one. Well, there's 100 in there. Uh, yeah, and then the guy's like looking at it in a magnifying glass like, ooh, oh, this has got to be worth something. <laughs> well, he's intent on getting the rest of that gold, dude. Uh, yeah, he's like, oh, he's like scheming like, yeah, I'm going to get that son of a bitch. Uh, this is so great, too, because like he he freaks out and the guy, you know, Warwick tells him he's a leprechaun or whatever. But he has like this fucking like old like window CD ROM full of folklores and legends that he boots up. Yeah, the Flash, uh, the, the game or whatever. <laughs> and he and he starts and it's like, oh, welcome to the world of leprechauns. And I'm, I'm Mister O'Grady. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kelly O'Brien, and I'm going to tell you all about the yeah. leprechauns. We love they love potatoes and those little things are uh, you know. <laughs> If you steal a leprechaun's gold, they gotta grant you one wish. They love shoes, by the way. I'm gonna tell you all about the the, the rules of the leprechaun as uh, we go through this. They did carry that over, by the way. The shoe thing. I when appreciate he, that. When he bites the toe off, he's first admi admiring the man's shoe. He's yeah. like, "Oh, I love these things." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we get some we get some pretty good gore stuff here. Um, I don't want to jump around too much because there's a lot of cutting back and forth. There so is. So I just want to yeah. like wrap Gupta up real quick. <laughs> yeah, because he lasts like 30 or 40 minutes, but it's really just a couple the scenes yeah. that are intercut between other things happening for just so the timeline matches up. I mean, it's all right the way that it's paced yeah. and the way that it's cut. I think it's fine. Um, but it, it uh, just by the end of it, you think this guy's going to survive and then just Lubby just instantly, <laughs> he breaks his neck with a fucking phone cord. <laughs> he shoots him with a fucking arrow. Oh, yeah. Um, the statue of this like Cupid yeah. that he magically telepathically controls and fires the arrow, even though it's just a statue and it would, whatever, he's there's magic. Some, there's some good leprechaun magic in yeah. this because like he he, he, his glamour stuff is really on on uh, display here True. in this film because like he like shows like himself in like a mirror and like Gupta's like looking at that. That's pretty good. That made like a Jurassic Park. Yeah, a right bit. with the Raptors. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he shoots him in the arm and then uh, he just beats the shit out of him with this shillelagh. And there's a part where Gupta like wants to make a deal with him and he's like, "All right, give me half your gold and I'll give you this medallion." And he's like, "Are you fucking crazy?" He's like, yeah. "All right, sure, no problem. I'll, you can have half my gold, sure." Yeah. But then that's when he's like at the computer <laughs> trying to find out the last piece of trivia <laughs> he, he needs. He like drops the coin. Loved in like uses a fishing rod oh, and like yeah. pulls the medallion away and then beats this man mercilessly and then they like you said chokes him to death with a fucking telephone cord while it's saying our little leprechauns love potatoes by the way or <laughs> you're just gonna bullshit. be important later and then I love them's like because he has baby's day out vision but it's because not because he can't see below his knees it's like reverse it's just because he's really short he can't see the fucking coin on the desk he's just oh, like yeah. where's my coin it's like a foot above him and he could smell it I don't know why it's not right there well he doesn't have that power yet Joe he hasn't gotten to that part in the script oh, Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, he's just... His selective sm uh, gold-smelling uh, trait. His bloodlust got to him, right? <laughs> he, gotcha. Yeah, he was licking the blood off the shillelagh. He got too distracted. So we get introduced to Scott and yes. Tammy. Now, Scott is this kid who's going to college, I guess, in Nevada somewhere. He's very naive. He's just stopping in by Vegas because why not? I'm he, in the area. He is like small-town USA kid who do, who's never been like very sheltered. You know what right, I mean? and that that's kind of the gag of his character. Yeah. Fish out of water yeah. kind of thing, and he's like a young kid. He's going to college. He meets this hot chick by the side of the road who just happens to be a magician's assistant at <laughs> this casino called the Lucky Shamrock. She's just, by the way, real quick, she's like broken down on the side of the road, and this guy's just not paying attention and almost careens into <laughs> her. And then he's like, yeah, what's wrong with your car? She's like, yeah, it won't start. And he like opens up the hood, and he's like, oh, yeah, I figured it out. You don't have an engine. Oh, duh, because it's a bug. You get it? Yeah. I don't think they put uh, engines in the back of VW Bugs since, like, fucking 1972. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Ur- you were talking about Urkel earlier. Urkel I'll, had it like that. I'm, the, I'm not a car guy, so I don't know when they stopped doing that. Same. But then he finds where the engine actually is, and he's like, I have no idea what I'm looking at, well, so I j- guess I'll drive you. Well, no, it's a joke because yeah, um, well, clearly yeah. the V Dubs didn't have the, 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 they had the engine in the back, but he's like, oh, you, you blow a rod before? It's just like, right. excuse me? And he's like, no, I have pistons and rods. Something's fucked up in there. Yeah, he, they, he's trying to sound cool, but he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So, yeah, they they join up. And she's like, well, I got to get to my job at the Lucky Shamrock. <laughs> yeah, can you take me there? So they're flirting and shit. And, kind of. Uh, and she takes him in to uh, see the casino because he's like, oh, I've never been in a real casino. Like, Can I check it out? Can you show me, please? And she's like, uh, all right, well, go in, look around, and then get the fuck out, all right? You can't I'm gonna, gamble. I'm going to get fired because you're not 21 or something. Also, I know, low-budget film, they got to do what they got to do, but they could have spent maybe $50 more on that vinyl banner. It just... <laughs> Get it to look a little better, you know, paint around. I don't know. I'm not the expert here, but it looks like shit on this very nice, expensive building, this vinyl <laughs> sign that just is Lucky Shamrock, but hey. They didn't want to blow their whole budget on that. They had to pay Warwick, I guess. Uh, this kid is walking around this casino like he's in fucking Disneyland. <laughs> like, it's his like, mouth is open. Like, he's like, wow, look, there's people playing slots. I never saw that before in my life. Look, crap tables and all this shit. And it's like, I, are you a gambler? I, I, we find out that he actually is. No, but are it, you a gambler? Oh, me personally? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> do you like to gamble? Like, like, do you like to go to... You know, that was a very... I uh, have a very addictive personality, so do. I cannot gamble. Really? Uh, that's why I deleted all the uh, gotcha games off my phone. Uh, several years ago. The truth comes out. I, I mean, to be fair, my phone also went into a toilet and was destroyed, so it was, it was kind of a hassle to get them back, but it also saved me thousands of dollars. So Holy shit. Yes, I don't gamble because I don't know how to stop because once I start winning, I keep playing, and that's the gimmick. That's how they get you. One eight hundred. You need 1-800-GAMBLER, dude. That's why I just don't gamble. Yeah. I just don't <laughs> fuck with it. I don't gamble because I don't care. Yeah. Um, that's, something that okay, I, yeah. that's something that I never really gave a shit about. Um, but that's interesting. I didn't know that. About I, you. I enjoy it, but it is not something like I don't go to AC. I mean, we're right. we're close to well, Lion City. We, and... Well, we also used to live close. And that even was like, closer. That yeah. was like a thing to do uh, where we lived. That's what you did on the weekend. For a some lot people. of my family goes. Yeah. A lot, I know people that go, but no, I'm good. I used to do the horse track occasionally, mostly as a family. Horse thing. track is fun, and that's fun to go and spend a couple bucks on a sure. horse because, like, if you put down five bucks and you make ten bucks, then you go buy another drink, kind of thing. Sure, and that's kind of fun. Uh, but no, I am not one of these people that's going to go to Vegas or Lake City or wherever. Yeah. There's even the place in PA. I forget what the fuck it's called. Parks or something like that. Yeah, the Parks Casino or something. Like uh, that, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I, I get why <laughs> there's fun to that. I just kind of like, oh, they have the Three Stooges machine. I'll, I'll, I'll waste 10 bucks on the penny <laughs> machine, the penny slots. Are you going to lose your $23,000 uh, check on no, the, on I the see Three exactly, Stooges machine? No. If I got the 23000 check, I'd fucking leave, personally. <laughs> that, that That's the extreme end of it. But no, I don't like the gamble because it's just... I don't know when to stop, and sure. I just don't like it that much. Sure. So Scott um, is enamored by everything yes. in this. He loves know, it a lot. He loves it. He is like he he thinks it's the it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And also, speaking of budgets, I feel like they spent even though. I don't think these extras were paid, paid very much. Maybe a sandwich or some bag of chips. But like, I feel like they wasted a lot of budget on these ca- casino floor shots, where it's just like fifty or sixty people crammed into this room, like make it look like a casino. <laughs> it mostly works. It's like but... the Punisher casino, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Frank Castle's gonna come in and start just lighting up the joint. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about how many days they shot that scene because there's like four or five scenes in that location. Yeah. They they fucking booked it through that schedule. <laughs> like uh, Brian Trencher Smith's like, we gotta get this done in two days because we have like sixty fucking extras in this shot. <laughs> it's Cost us an arm and a leg. I think they shot this movie in like 14 days or something. Oh, like well, that. there you like, go. Which is pretty impressive. Fucking that is Fortnite. impressive. So he's there and he's and he's and he's wants to gamble and shit. And he pulls his check out. It's a twenty three thousand dollar check that he has from his dad for school tuition and housing. He cashes the whole motherfucker and not just like let me cash this check. Give me the rest cash. I'll put it in a bag and I'm gonna have like a couple hundred bucks. Right. He he takes the full twenty three thousand fucking dollars in chips and goes and blows it all on this roulette table. <laughs> he goes up to the shadiest looking person in the casino. For Caroline Williams. Caroline Williams. Uh, <laughs> welcome you know. back to the MDU, yes, Caroline. welcome. Uh, still, Step, I th- Stepfather 2. Stepfather 2. I still think Stretch still takes the cake. Yeah. She's very funny in this, uh, but she is a slimy motherfucker in this film, and she works for the the, the casino boss, yeah. and Mitch. they're they're very clearly cheating. 
Uh, but this guy's so naive. I mean, granted, it is under the table. Why would you, you know, what are you going to call him on it? It's like a magnet yeah. that like pulls the ball, I guess, to a different number. So on the relay table, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, but right before that, they never do go where, anywhere with this, but I think this guy's supposed to be a plant, this very sharp-dressed man that wins all this money. And he's like, wow, he won all that money. I, I could be like that guy. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. And then they start scamming his ass. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole that's the whole bit. Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro uh, yeah. are there. <laughs> Don Rickles is in the corner. He wants exactly six fucking blueberries in those muffins or whatever uh, it that's is. That's De Niro, yeah, yeah he yeah. wants the equal amount. Yeah, you know what? As I was thinking about this, we didn't really talk about, but th is there an MDU back room? Like the pawn shop, but now that you mentioned, there's got to be an MDU casino. Well, this is it. The yeah. Lucky Shamrock, for sure. <laughs> uh, Joe Bob's uh, in there somewhere. Uh, it was a deleted scene, I oh, think. Oh, down, but... the, down the stairwell, yeah. yeah, for sure. That's an interesting thought. We'll have, to, we'll, we'll have to keep that in the back of our heads. We haven't done too many casino films. Obviously, the movie Casino is just a movie we've both seen, but... Yeah. Uh, I have to keep that in mind now. We got we have another location I in can, the MDU. I can tie up Don Rickles to a casino that's also in a horror movie. And I'm Tales from the Crypt. I was gonna say there's gotta be some yeah. Tales from the Crypt yeah. shit. The the ventriloquist dummy. So yes. that, that sounds about right. That is I've seen that one. That's a weird one. Yes, money. So so we so we get introduced to Caroline Williams here, who's who's uh, Loretta. Loretta, yeah. Um, and we do get introduced to a couple other characters. Fazio, uh, Fazio, who's the magician who is Tammy's boss, right? And then Mitch, who runs the casino. Fat Ray Liotta, yeah, fat, fucking Paul Sorvino. Uh, yeah, kind of. We were talking about that earlier. It's one or the other. They yeah. fused. Yeah, that dude's definitely cutting up a fucking piece of garlic with a with a razor blade. <laughs> He's gonna be dealing with cocaine bear at some point, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, or he would have been if Love didn't get in his way. Uh, but yeah, we are introduced to all these kind of uh, antagonistic characters yeah, while, all... while Scott's just blowing his money, his life savings away. And there's two other people I want to introduce here, and then we can, we can sure, get back yeah. to the, oh, Lo Art. the Lubden antics. Uh, Art and Tony, who are these two thug guys that Mitch owes money to? And they're yeah, like these com the like comedic bookies. relief whatever. Kind of, yeah. but I feel like... There may, there's, there's pretty there's some pretty funny conversation between them. They're like talking about like box shorts and jockeys uh, yeah. and all they're this. They're talking about underwear and underwear socks. And socks. It, listen, it's funny. Yeah. And I just don't know what the point of those characters are beyond that. It's like, okay, yeah, Mitch has his little side story because each character has, has something going on. But it's like, all right, so you have these guys here just to talk and have like underwear jokes. And then like Tony gets totally like treated like a chump by the leprechaun and just like keeps just acting like everything's normal and I'm just like wouldn't you be like getting the fuck out of there we're gonna Call get the to cops. that in a second <laughs> no but you're right yeah so those are kind of our main players uh, but the point is uh, Scott keeps losing all his money and Loretta keeps egging him on to spend more spend more and he's like what he's like I'm broke I don't have any more I don't have anything what about that watch you get some money for that watch just go across the street to the pawn shop and that's how we kind of finally get back to Lubden is he's now going to pawn his grandfather's fucking watch that he had. You know, Christopher Walken brought that over here from Korea, Joe. He, he had it in, in his, his ass. ass. $23,000 gone. Gone. Well, it seemed like he also just kept, like, betting, like, Max because he didn't understand how it worked, which <laughs> uh, would totally here, be me. Here's a, th here's a thousand. Here's another thousand. Here's another thousand. <laughs> Yeah, you know those chips have meaning. They don't just the color, they're just they're, pretty they're colors. Different colors for reasons. Yeah. So yeah, he goes over there, and that's where he finds Lubden finishing off, choking out Gupta. Well, he he comes in, and he finds Gupta dead, yeah, and he yeah. calls the cops. But this is where he finds the fucking coin. The, right, because Lubden lucky never found shilling. it because it's on the table. It's on six, the keyboard, six inches above his head. Yeah, above his eye line. Yeah, like, you can't see it. Where the it's fuck right is there. it? <laughs> so the thing about this film is that. When you get the leprechaun's shilling or his gold, if, whether it's one or all of them, you can make a wish. One wish. Because it's different in every film. And the second yeah. one is if you held it, you couldn't be hurt. Which is I, which is good. Yeah. I thought that was a cool thing. But, like, since the fucking writer didn't watch two, <laughs> you know what I mean? He had to come up with something new. I, he just threw it in there. It, mm -hmm. Like, he never saw it, so he didn't know. And that's the other thing, because I'm like, wait a second, why are these people getting hurt if they hold the coin? And I'm like, oh yeah, because it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, so then, like, Lubden's about to, like, go after this guy, and, like, I forget what prompts this, but he he's says, like... He I, says, I wish I was back at the casino on a winning streak, and he disappears, and his, and Lubden was gonna, like, ax him in the back. Oh, yeah. And he's yeah. like, he's got my shilling! He uses an axe a lot in this film, you're yeah. right. And then he he's, he doesn't even realize Lubden was there, and no. now he's back, and he's like, huh... Hmm, maybe, and he takes one of these coins and he like 
puts it on the fucking like poker chip and it's just moving starts, by itself yeah, moving around and Loretta's like oh whoa she doesn't like say no stop does, the bed she just watches it happen does anybody see this happening uh, and then he's got like a whole crowd around him he's won like like a hundred grand and now Mitch is like over there like hey uh, how'd you let it get this fucking bad she's like I've been hitting the button the whole time and they keep like showing it under the uh, the magnet falls yeah, off uh, the magnet falls off and, and fucking Scott's like yeah I'm on a winning streak like being real obvious about it again no one knows this guy has magic so they can't think beyond that but mitch is just like yeah we're in trouble you need to get that money back loretta and by the way we're we're, we're closing this for maintenance yeah. for a little bit and the whole crowd's like oh come on he was on a roll hey kid you staying at the hotel that's a lot of money you got there here's a fucking hotel kid it's on me talk kiddo. about casino that they literally show that in casino where there's like the asian guy wins all the money at the yeah. at the thing but they, they're like oh he's gonna steal the towel so they make him stay a couple more days to lose all the money it's a classic casino it's a classic trick. thing yeah they give you all the amenities and then he's like yeah why don't you go take a shower or something to relax come back and uh, try your luck again see what happens I mean they're also like incredibly shady like somehow the the, yeah. the thugs or or, or mobsters rather running the casino in the movie casino which was based on on real life I mean well, yeah. it's, it's Hollywooded up it's but possible. it's like yeah. they were more professional than the people in Leprechaun 3 no because uh, these guys are just basically like blatant scumbags uh, blatant scumbags who are running a fucking scam yeah more or less saying yeah take a shower and don't worry about the guy in your room taking all your money oh yeah you know like Tim Curry from Home Alone 2 or yeah. some shit well, oh. <laughs> you know it's like basically that like yeah take a shower don't worry about it put headphones on you nosy little pervert I'm gonna smack you silly yeah put cotton balls Ooh. in your ears and it, it's good for your health and oh okay yeah <laughs> Uh, so Tammy comes out and sees him with all of his fucking money. And she's like, what are you doing? He's like, look, I won. Isn't this great? She's like, shut the fuck up. She's like, cash your chips out. And get the fuck out of here. Get back in your stupid car. Get out of here. And he's like, no, what are you, crazy? I'm staying upstairs. And she's like, fine, cash your shit out. Bring it upstairs. Don't let anybody in the room. Make sure the money stays right next to you because she knows that somebody's going to come up to that room and fucking steal oh, it from Oh, yeah. Them. And, like, again, like, every character so far has been painted in a negative light. Even Fazio. Yeah. You know, she's complaining about him. They're like, all okay. shysters, yeah. Well, yeah, but, like, you expect someone to complain about their boss, you know. But, you know, when you actually meet this guy, he's really annoying. He's like, you know, Loretta's like, I could do the job. I could be the assistant instead. He's like, yeah, but she fills the suit out better. Like, that's <laughs> the only reason why we hired her. Like, just being real, like, sexist about it. So then we get all the great shots of Warwick. Running around Las Vegas, I'm almost positive that they're just like, "All right, get get work in the leprechaun makeup. We got one day in fucking Vegas. We're gonna shoot everything we can of without getting around. caught." Yeah, the strip. <laughs> like, it's all guerrilla filmmaking. Of like, oh yeah, uh, you know what I mean. And speaking of Baby's Day Out vision, these yeah. people actually have Baby's Day Out vision. Nobody reacts to fucking leprechaun running around, Warwick running around. I don't think those are extras. I think, like Joe just said, those are just randos that just happen to be in the shot. How do you not react <laughs> to a camera crew and Warwick Davis walking around? He goes to the titty bar and he's like, hey, 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 and hey, such, maybe later. They're such quick shots. Yeah, him and Gold, Beetlejuice would get, get along. Golden Nugget, I want one of those. Like, it's just Warwick yeah. just ad-libbing as they get shots of oh, him around Vegas. Yeah, the Golden Nugget, I forgot yeah. about that. But yeah, he, he finally makes his way to the Lucky Shamrock. And like, I don't even think he realizes it's that at first, like the place that he needs to go. But then he, he smells the gold. Well, he's like, he's like, uh, it's a the luck of the Irish brought me here to the Shamrock place. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that guy from uh, Halloween Resurrection that I can remember, never remember his name, Luck of the Irish, as we love to refer oh. to him as. Another uh, St. Paddy's Day film, the Disney Channel original we covered. Oh, yeah. Go back and check that out. That's a classic. Uh, talking about eat leprechauns eating fucking potatoes. <laughs> the potato chip factory. Uh, yeah. Henry Gibson. Henry Gibson himself, for fuck's sake. Potato chip factory. Uh, he's a leprechaun. This leprechaun doesn't shrink down like in that film, though. No, no, no. He's not giving anybody a hando in their pocket, no. That, that we're aware of. No, no green spunk. Well, no, he he takes the the starfish and he shoves it down his drawers. There, that's the, that's what he does. Right when he starts going full full uh, leprechaun, it gets confused. It, instead of going to Lubby, it runs to him, and he's like, "Well, what the fuck?" And it just starts sucking. He's like, "Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say no." No, he just starts blowing his load right in it. So he gets to the. That's lucky... how they got the grimace shake. Oh, oh, it got God. confused. It went to Uncle uh, O'Shamus. It got confused. Oh, no. It wasn't. It wasn't Scott. It was O'Shamus. <laughs> he happened to be in the area one day. He was visiting Grimace and. Uh, uh, something got mixed up. In that trailer, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because yeah. he's still a grimace person. He's green, but he's a grimace per person, so he's, he's got, got purple he's got, cum. He's got purple cum. That's why they got to lay it. Loved it. Yeah, exactly. That was, the, you know, that we just figured it out. That was the big scam all along McDonald's was running. It wasn't, you know, Uncle o o Seamus or whatever the fuck Grimace's uncle's called. He, he was actually not the one that was creating the Shamrock Shakes, that the secrets that it was loved in the whole time. Because oh. he could only produce purple 
uh, shakes and, and, you know, McDonald's didn't want to talk about it for like 50 years, but then recently they had that birthday thing. Grimace, oh, gotcha. Grimace ain't going to come in his own cup. I think he did, it, though. It was for his birthday. Why is he going to drink his own cum? That's his uncle's cum. That ain't Grimace's cum. What, you going to drink your own cum? I don't think Grimace is He's drinking his own cup. He'll drink his uncle's cup. <laughs> it's Uncle O'Shamus. It's like a shamrock shake, but it's purple. I don't know. <laughs> He's doing the perp drink. He, he eats a lot of raspberries. Oh, my God. <laughs> Razzleberry gravy. <laughs> Just totally lost the plot on that one. <laughs> second. Uh, so, so, so Leprechaun rolls up to the front of the Lucky Shamrock and Elvis impersonator pulls up in a fucking car. Oh, that in a limo, and, and yeah. London even like scratches his nail up the side. But, but they're, they're they're fucking doing a dance off. He, he's like, "Oh, I love I love your uh, clothes or whatever the fuck he says." And uh, Elvis says, like, "I love your boots, man." You come in blue suede, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. He's they like, hit hey, it off. That's pretty good, man. Next time you do it, you get paid for it. And then they fucking do like the Elvis thing. Yeah. Warwick's like, or rather I should say Lubden is like, you know, I was going to kill him on a toilet, but he's all right. I'll let him live. I'll let him live tonight. Because <laughs> he, he knows what's going to happen to him. Yeah. Well, he smells that gold and he gets distracted <laughs> before he could take Elvis out. He gets into this fucking uh, casino and he like runs into Fazio at first because Fazio's doing like, like this shitty magic with like a bunny rabbit, like a stuffed bunny rabbit and stuff. <laughs> they don't let the casinos don't let me have real animals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like inside the casino, like in between shows, kind of thing. And he goes to do a trick for for the leprechaun, and he like puts a, a, a sheet a, up, a sheet up over his hand, and like Loveden puts like literal shit in his hand, <laughs> green shit. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I've been talking about for years. Yeah, he's coming green. That's shit. That's what I'm saying. He's got green shit, like literal green shit, because he's, he's like smelling it. He's got green blood, green shit, green cum. It's it's all the, it's all the same. All green liquids coming out of Loveden. Yeah, uh, ever you, since... never, you never know what you're gonna get. But you know, he now he's shooting craps <laughs> on the fucking table, and like this is hilarious to me yeah. because uh, it's just this leprechaun in the middle of this casino, and nobody like bats an eye because everybody's oh, yeah, a yeah. fucking weirdo. I guess. You know what we didn't mention? The father from Deep, Night of the Demons 2. Oh, is Father in this, Bob. Father Bob is in this casino. With some of the characters, Shirley and a few others. With Shirley, the boob the boob chick, the boob yeah. squeeze chick um, from Night of the Demons 2, yeah. Mouse's sister or what, or, or something. Friend. Friend, yeah. Yeah. But, like, we always talk about the MDU, and, like, this is literal <laughs> MDU shit. <gasps> Brian like, Trenchard Brian Smith Tr had his the, own. The Brian Trenchard Smith universe. The, the BTS universe. So this clearly took place before... Night of the Demons 2. Uh, I don't know what the release order actually is. It but... was, yeah, it was that St. Patrick's Day. Before. <laughs> this is right before? Yeah. And then at the and end that, of the... And that happens in October. It all went to shit nine months couple, later. A couple months later. Uh, Ma Mouse. I don't know why that's the only character name, because it's Mouse. Because it's Mouse, and it's just... Somehow survives whatever. that night. Snake, Snake Angela. I don't know no snakes. Um, so yeah, he's shooting craps, and Tony and Anton come over to him, and they're like, we're taking over this table, little fuck you. And he's like, he's like, what are you talking about? He fucking takes a coin and sticks it in Tony's mouth and pulls his arm and turns him into a human slot machine. <laughs> he even says something like, oh, you're like a slot machine. And then he's like, coins just keep coming out of this guy's mouth. Again, just kind of goes back to what he's doing. Like, huh, that was weird. How long do you think those coins keep coming out of his mouth? Like, how long does that magic last? Uh, I, uh, just about as long as those slugs kept coming out of Ron Weasley's oh, mouth. So yeah, wild. So. Yeah, and he had to go, yeah, he had to go into the wizard's hospital. Yeah. Um, they stopped what, eventually. Yeah, but. If this little thing shoved a coin in your mouth and you started spitting out other coins, you, I wouldn't fuck with them again. You know what I mean? I, again, I'd be going to the ER. I'd be yeah. calling. I mean, this guy's not going to call the cops because he's clearly some kind of like illegally hired muscle who's threatening uh, Mitch that he's going to murder him. But, you know, maybe don't hang out. So I know they're waiting for Mitch. They're trying to collect their uh, what's due to them. Yeah. Uh, but maybe just wait outside. I don't know. So Loretta and Fazio have a plan to rob Scott. In his room. And Fazio goes up there. Loretta wants the coin, and they're going to split all his money, the $100,000. So Fazio goes up there to rob him, and he ends up not finding the money, but he steals his coin. Right, because the money's, like, in the bathroom with yeah, him. Yeah, but... and Scott comes out, and fucking Fazio, like, throws a shirt at him and, like, punches him in the stomach. A, and, like, sh a shirt that is Scott's that he was going to steal at first? Oh, this is really nice. He's like, Silk, I'll keep that. But you're right, yeah, he steals the coin and he gets the hell out of there. <laughs> and not even a second later, the leprechaun comes rolling in with fucking room service and this green smoke. <laughs> he rides this thing like Slimer in a yeah. few scenes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he comes in. He's always like a second too late. Again, he could smell this fucking thing, but I guess it just, it takes him a minute to pick up the scent again. He always has like the old scent. That's how we're up in the body count, sure. right? Sure. You know? 
Except for Scott, because then he's like getting attacked by Lubden and he's like biting him in the fucking arm. Dude, he jumps on him and like sinks his teeth into his arm and, and Scott takes a fucking steak knife and shoves it right into the middle of his forehead. This is cool. Now, this is right, something- from the room service. This is right. something from this movie that I really like and this whole concept because he bites him and then his blood gets into the wound. Mm-hmm. And this kicks off the whole wear leprechaun shit. But before- Even though it's more like a vampire, but sure- well, yeah, kind of. Not, I mean, we're talking about a leprechaun uh, werewolf. I mean, let's not overthink uh, yeah, this. Yeah, same difference. Yeah, kind, yeah. kind. They're both. They're all magical creatures, right? Yeah. I guess he doesn't drink the blood; it just lands in the wound. It so. just spills in it, right? Bonds with his DNA. <laughs> but this is what this is my favorite scene of the whole fucking movie, dude. Because after he stabs Lubden in the head, he throws him out the fucking window. Yeah. And this screen. I used to rewind this tape as a kid. When he throws, when he throws Leprechaun out the window, he Warwick scream on the way down, and when he just smacks that fucking pavement, dude, I, it's it gets a laugh out of me every time. Yeah, that was one of the cheaper effects. Uh, they mostly blended. I thought it was, okay. I thought it was great. They mostly blended. Okay, but there's it was just, a total dummy coming out of there. I don't know. It looks like a Photoshop image just launching. <laughs> no, it's and then a hitting dummy the ground. getting thrown okay. out of that window. I got to give that a second viewing. <laughs> Didn't look great, but maybe it's just me. Oh, it's so good. Uh, hits the ground like a sack of potatoes, of course, because he's Irish. Uh, and then this just like puts him out of commission just long enough for Scott to get the fuck out of Dodge as, as Lubbin's pulling the snake knife out of his head. He like breaks it off and he's like, next, you know, then you get the shit. They're like, next time I'll take the elevator. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. All right. What what kind of movie are we making still? Are we making that like kitty comedy or are we making the, the, the rated R version? Well, then, of course, he looks back at the camera and goes, he's got my shilling. Because <laughs> that's like he keeps like never getting the damn shilling no. back. But he smells it again. I, again, there's so many scenes of him smelling it. it. Might not be every time, but he's like, "Ah, my shilling." Well, Fazio gives Loretta the coin. She rips it out of his hand. But yeah, yeah. She, you know they get it back because he wants to sell it because they didn't get the money. He Mitch, doesn't understand the whole thing. Yeah, Mitch comes up and he's like, "Did you get my fucking money back yet?" And she's like, "No, not yet." He takes the coin right. from her and she's like, "He's like, I'm gonna hold on to this until you get me my money like back from that, ki- from that kid." And by happenstance, they're talking about each other being disgusting fucking slobs that they are. And he's like, I could get any woman that I want, you fat bitch. And she's like, yeah, like that Tammy, like that Tammy girl. Right, because he's like kind of trying to hit on her earlier when she clearly wants nothing to do with it. He's trying to fuck her the whole time. Yeah, Yeah, it's gross. And he's just like, I wish. And then, whoop, all of a sudden Tammy's like, oh, Mitchie Poo, I'm going to suck your dick right on the ground here. (laughs) Well, hey, yeah. take me on the floor, Mitch. She does say that, and she's like all over him. And then he's like, "Whoa!" He doesn't doesn't think anything's weird. Just thinks, "All right, I'm a lucky guy." And then like goes in the elevator with her, takes her up to his room. Yeah, but she, there's like a twist on it though, because it's like so. So let me ask you a question. Sure. He wishes that Tammy wants him, right? Like wants to fuck him, right? Yeah. Is this her actual kinks coming out? Like the like slapping them and the rough stuff shit. You think that like she's actually like that? Yeah, I think in, so. In, in, the old, in the old bedroom there in the sheets. I, I think it's getting ramped up to like, but just as insistent in the streets and freak in the sheets. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's ratcheted it up a little because London's a you know a spicy motherfucker. He likes to really take things to the extreme. But I wouldn't be surprised if she likes a little horseplay in the bed. <laughs> horseplay. Um, I mean, she also likes to be a fucking tease. I mean, there's a reason for that that ends up working for the character, but. But it takes her a long time to get strip out of these clothes. <laughs> well, it's already this, very sexual to begin with. This this chick is not bearing her breast for this movie, and it stops right before that happens. Good for her, honestly. Hey, no, no, not sure, that there's anything great. wrong with that. No, but. I mean, but they're like, ah, shit, she's not showing her tits. We gotta have tits in this movie, baby. <laughs> yeah. But there's like, uh, you know, this whole scene where she's doing these strip tees, dancing for yeah. this guy on the bed, and he's getting hard as a fucking rock. He's got some serious mahogany. Uh, he's got a full fucking redwood going. <laughs> What does he call it? He, he fucking says, oh, you want my heat-seeking moisture missile? Oh, I don't know if he God. says that to Tammy. Oh, he says it to the TV chick. Right, which we're going to get to in yeah, one yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Loretta sneaks in again, like Tim Curry. A little better at it than Tim Curry was, at, or, and Fazio for that matter. But she grabs the- uh, Well, Mitch was getting fucked, so. Well, it, she, she hears him in the background. Oh, yeah, take it off, take it off. And Tammy being all sexual, loud and stuff as she's taking this bra off one- you know, it takes her like an hour to take it off, but uh, Loretta steals the coin. And as she leaves the room, as Tammy, like you said, is about to pull those off and show a nipple, she's like, 
You know, no Snoopies, dude. What the fuck? What's going on? And then, like, you know, just barely avoided being raped. Which is pretty awful because she's like, how did I get here? What'd you do to me? And, like, that whole thing. Thing is kind of gross. I mean, I mean they, it is gross. They make it kind of funny, but they also then have that scene a little bit later after Mitch is dispatched, uh, where she's kind of breaking down, like, "Oh, this wasn't the first time this happened," and it's pretty dark yeah, actually. Yeah, but yeah. on some level, I'll, usually I'll kind of criticize these things, but it, it works so well in this scene, and I feel like it is kind of shining a light on that without being overly uh, beating you over the head with the idea. Just, just to, in this movie that has so uh, much levity. To have that kind of kind of like Gremlins, not not as extreme as Gremlins, no, obviously. But I know what you mean, yeah. But it's like, wow, a little bit of a, a shot of reality, I yeah. guess. But she needs him right in the fucking balls. Needs him in the balls, gets the fuck out. And she of fires. Her. He fires her. Over that's that. what that's what she's more upset about, and it's like, go get a job. Right. At, there's a casino next door. Well, that's the dark comedy element yeah, yeah, yeah. of like, yeah, she was almost sexually assaulted, but the real problem is she lost her job. That's the yeah, joke, right? Yeah, I guess. Kinda, but anyway, so Mitch gets his comeuppance where this fucking terror vision ass scene happens, <laughs> where this fucking woman, or or almost like Freddy Krueger, actually, yeah, Leprechaun like puts magic into the TV, which then I feel like he does again in four or five, but uh, mm. this is definitely the first time he does it that I can remember. I can't remember if he does the TV thing again. He does in four. He definitely does in four, but it's not like a, a woman taking her top off. It's like the guy oh, no, no, in no, the no, safety no. scene towards the end. No, 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 no. I know what you're talking about. He does a glamour of one of the actors maybe that's what it is and he but he's morphed into people before sure sure this is like a he's like doing like tv programs uh yeah like terror vision or like actually more like videodrome or uh even, even poltergeist to some extent where this fucking chick comes right out of the tv <laughs> she's like hey mitch want to see my tits he's and like she, is this real is this a dream i guess it's real and she comes out of the fucking television and she's like riding him on the bed this is an hologram <laughs> <laughs> this is some of my let favorite. me see those titties <laughs> Some of my favorite bits too, because on the TV, as this chick is like in the riding background. this guy, uh, Warwick Davis is on TV as a leprechaun in all these different roles. Like he's a lawyer in one thing, he's like a TV evangelist in another, and he's like a psychic in another one. Yeah. Very funny shit. It, it it was so fun to see that because it, again we talked about it before, but it was like letting Warwick really embrace the comedy aspect of it and kind of do something really fun. Yeah, I love and, that. and those are the, those are some good scenes. And I always appreciate costume changes on like. Creatures. I yeah. guess he's kind of like a creature, just like yeah. uh, he's on a monster creature. He's the monster. He's the yeah. Because a lot of times I feel like in these films, at least the ones that we've covered, and maybe some that I've just seen, where it's like they have their one version, their mold or whatever. They don't go beyond that. I mean, they might have multiple types for different. You know, one might have to take a beating, one might not. But it's like kind of cool when you see the different costume changes. Where, like you just said, he's like a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, and then later he's got this little cape he has on when he when he does his magic trick. So this thing turns into a fucking robot, and it's yeah. cre it's creepy as hell, and it's like all hooked up to the TV, and it's a pretty cool effect. Um, and he electrocutes Mitch to death, like in the bed. Um, and then Tammy and Scott run in because they're gonna like confront Mitch or whatever about what he did to her. Sure. They should. And they show up, and he is fried to a fucking crisp. He's supposed to be. I kind of want him to look a little more like that guy after Joker gives him the hand oh. buzzer. <laughs> he just kind of has some soot on his face and is clearly dead, but I guess that's what they're trying to convey, sure. Yeah. But Leprechaun, like, comes out from behind the bed. <laughs> oh, spooked you! <laughs> He's a He's like, back there. I smell my coin. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, right. And then Art and Tony rush in from, like, the other door and then just get annihilated. Again, why Tony even is just... <laughs> doesn't have a gun or a weapon after he just got turned into a slot machine. I don't know. The guy's clearly missing a few brain cells. There's a, two gags that I really like here. Sure. And one is um, Tammy throws something at Lep and they run out. And he's like, he like falls back on the bed and he's like laying down when Art and Tony walk in. <laughs> and, he, oh, yeah. and Art walks in and he's like, what the fuck is going on in here? Because uh, like he's like fried on the bed. Mitch is fried on the bed and like, there's just like a little person. Fucked his brains out. Yeah. <laughs> so he stabs Tony's eye out with his shillelagh. And then he's going to beat the shit out of Art. And right before Art dies, he looks up at him and he goes, he goes, tell me, tell me something. How was Judy Garland in real life? And I'm like, that was a fucking ace Mickey Rooney joke right there, dude. 
Well, I was thinking the same thing, but it's just because he's a fucking little person. Because he's a little person, but he looks like him he too. Does kinda. a little bit. It's it might be a double whammy. You're probably right. <laughs> Definitely Mickey Rooney from fucking Silent Night Deadly Night Five. Ah, <laughs> Joe Petto. That era for sure. When he was um, really looking like a goblin. It's just like those were there. That was pretty funny. It yeah. didn't need to be there, but like I appreciate it. I mean, I like meta humor. You usually don't. The fact that you appreciated that just speaks volumes for the joke. I think. Yeah. Because uh, I think it's fucking hilarious. I think it myself. lands really well. Well, we'll get to the final thought. <laughs> Sure, yeah. This, but yeah. So Caroline Williams has the coin, and her whole thing was like, I can't, I want to be sexy again with my tits up here and my ass here because I'm saving up my money because I'm going to get plastic surgery and that's going to fix me I or wanna something. Be, I want to be beautiful again. Yeah. And then she makes the wish, and she's looking pretty damn good. I mean, she just looks like that. She's wearing all that frump shit oh, on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, on, on, on the, you know, when she's regular. Loretta. Yeah, it's a smart wardrobe choices. And uh, she's from all the, padded out and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how they did that. That's the goof. Uh, the hair, not so much, but that was the style at the time. Sure. That was very in. Yeah, I, I think Edward Scissor Hands instantly, where it's like they kept getting those haircuts. They kind oh, of fit yeah, in with sure. the time. I feel like yeah. even the mom eventually gets a very short haircut like that. Very stylish for the 90s. It's very akin to the one from uh, Dream Girl from Tales from the Dark Side. Oh, that we yeah, did. you're right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the point is she's she's sexified. Yeah, she's hot. She's walking around as hot Caroline Williams now. And everyone's looking at her ass and, and her she's tits. jiggling her fucking breasts Oh, around. she keeps doing that in the mirror. She's snoopy swinging, yeah. Yeah, and while she's oogling her uh, bazingas. Uh, <laughs> she wants <laughs> to, like, fuck herself. Yeah, she's just, she's oh, like, I so- wish I could turn into a man so I could fuck myself into the ground, <laughs> screw myself into the ground. <laughs> But then uh, as she's looking at herself in the mirror, Lubden comes in. Well, Fazio takes the coin from her. Right. Um, which, which ruins her luck of just kind of the theme throughout. Yeah. It's not the same as the Mitch thing, though, because she should have turned back. Right. Well, I think that was just specifically because Tammy was being influenced. I mean, uh, let's not overthink it, but I think that was all there was to that. Sure. You're not wrong. That is kind of a plot hole, but. Loved and takes care of it. He makes sure that she changes back to norm- yeah. normal. Um, he get a bunch of good limericks from uh, Warwick here. Rapid fire about Rapid asses. Rapid fire, asses, lips. Brasses, or- brass balls and stuff. Well, brass balls was the other thing. He's talking about something else here. He's like, I'll make your lips as fat as your ass and all this shit. Yeah. And her fucking tits are gigantic and her ass is huge. Her <laughs> lips are fucking, they are all disgusting and distorted. Um, she, she looks like a real the- housewife of, uh, the you know, like a, the mob wives or something. Oh, she got a bad BBL. Uh, that's what it is. Because she can't even get fit through the fucking door because her hips are so wide. When she moves, you it, there's like the sound of liquid sloshing around. It's fucking gross, dude. Yeah, like too much uh, uh, fake shit inside yeah. her. Again, it doesn't really matter because Lubden just, you know, he's magic points at her and her whole fucking body explodes. She, he has, he has, he's got an umbrella, though. Speaking thankfully. of tremors, yeah, he's got an umbrella. <laughs> she explodes in, in like glorious Gay Bartalos, Frankenhooker style. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's fucking dead. Yeah, I, no kidding. Grease spot. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so then, here's this fucking scene here. And it's only here so that Scott and Tammy can go to the pawn shop to get the medallion to bring it back to the fucking casino. Because that's a big thing that they need to use yeah. for the end of the movie. I mean, it does also start to flesh out now that Scott has been bitten and this blood has fallen into the bite mark. That yeah, he is slowly transforming. I mean, he does have this quick scene where he sees himself fully transformed. Uh, in the mirror, very, very Teen Wolf-esque, and then now he's kind of going in stages where now he kind of has freckles and more hair. He's eating potatoes, he's doing limericks, <laughs> he's doing all kinds of shit. He orders every potato item on this menu <laughs> at this Irish uh, pub, and he's like hitting on this Irish waitress, and he's talking Irish. That is kind of similar to Luck of the Irish, where now he's just he's turning into an Irish yes. person. Yes, Persian, yes. Persian. Person. <laughs> Uh, and, and that kind of is the theme. And he just, every time he starts talking, you know, with the Irish accent, again, the music starts kicking up. Hard. And he's talking about, he does a limerick about penis au gratin or something like that, which <laughs> yeah. is pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, now they, they head to the pawn shop and they find the medallion. And uh, he's he's almost entirely transformed at this point because, like, even the the sight of the medallion makes him upset. He's like, oh, put that away! He, oh, get it away from me! He's becoming a full-blown rep- leprechaun because he smells the gold and he wants yes. Lubden's gold. He finds the safe. He yeah. finds the stash where uh, Lubden put it before, yeah. Snaps his fucking fingers and it just opens. He's using magic now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess you're a fucking giant leprechaun, yeah, man. Ver- very nonchalantly. Yeah. But, uh... This is the first time we're because you hear it on the computer and it's oh, like, yeah. oh, one leprechaun can't stand another leprechaun because they they're very territorial or whatever. And then Lubden comes in, he's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> well, it's also again this this uh, 
flash encyclopedia, let's call it, is it <laughs> always giving the right information at the, the right, right time. time. Someone just happens to bump into the space bar, and they're like, yeah, uh, by the way, uh, you can't destroy a leprechaun, but if you destroy his gold, that'll destroy him. Uh, put that in your cap. Yeah. And Tammy's like, we gotta destroy the gold, and Scott's like, well, yeah, yeah, we'll destroy it, but I want it! It's like a golem kind of thing. Also, like, well, we'll get to it. Fucking destroying the gold. That's what you got? Uh, I mean, what was it in two? I'm trying to remember now. Two was wrought iron. And one, obviously, they shot the was fuck the you four lucky charms floor. into the yeah, mouth. Yeah, fuck you lucky charms, yep. Uh, and four, they shot him out of fucking airlock. They just, bla- <laughs> it was literally alien. And then he exploded. And five, he doesn't die. No, he smokes weed and fucks bitches and sings. And I want to be hanging out with that. Lo- well, maybe not hanging out, he'd probably no. kill me, but I'll, he, I'll be him. He'll fuck you to death. Oh, God, he fucks him to death. Never mind. I take that. I don't want to be him. Christ, I'll take the magic, though. So you can't So you can't use the leprechaun's gold against him because they tried to like make a wish against him. And then, I wish you were dead or something, yeah. And he's concussed and submitted at the bottom of the ocean. He's like, oh, you can't do it, lad, blah, blah, blah. He's like, now for that trick, I'll chop off your dick. And he goes after him with a fucking axe. <laughs> right. Um, and, the, and I guess Tammy was like a softball champion or something, and she like throws something at Lubden and knocks him out, and they run away. Right. But the problem is Scott is like being debilitated by like turning the into a, a leprechaun, yeah. the transformation. So they, she takes him to a hospital. Now, this is where this fucking movie completely deviates, and I'm like, this is a... It just it's gets, literally a detour. It, it gets weird, right? I mean, it's already pretty weird in the scheme of things, but it definitely, I mean, I just said it, but there's this detour to the hospital. It just We're there feels for like, a while, though. It just is like kind of like padding. Like I, I like a couple of these scenes, but it mostly just feels like they're just to make the movie uh, uh, reach its runtime. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Because Lub- Lubden doesn't have a car in this one, unfortunately. He doesn't get in the go-kart or his, his leprechaun mobile like he does in the last two films. He just magically teleports there and is like a, a scrubs in a fucking no, he's, surgeon's outfit. He's, li- he's, he's trying to get a ride. He's hitchhiking. Oh, uh, well. There's like a scene of that. I, I completely forgot about that, yeah. actually. <laughs> but yeah, he's there in his scrubs and yeah. stuff. And I was going to say before, I was going to say, isn't there a fucking one of these movies where he's in a doctor's outfit? Ah. And there is, but it's only a brief thing. It's not like he kills him, like he comes in and pulls the thing and is like, oh, tis a pity I forgot me Novocaine or whatever the yeah. fuck, you know? Because like, they're now they're going to like operate on Scott or something because he's bleeding out of the mouth, green blood's coming well, out of his mouth. It's the thing of, it's the thing of like, here's these shitty doctors yeah. and they're like, does he have insurance? <laughs> does he? Yeah, this could be the difference between life and death. Do you have insurance? And he goes, do you take Green Cross? Do you take Green Cross? And okay. um, it's just like they find his money next to him and they're like, we're going to run tests for the next three days and, and give him every test we think of yeah. he's rich. And like, that's kind of funny, I guess, but it's just really weird. I like, think, I think it's funny if Lubden then comes in and kills them. But yeah, no, this guy, not what happens. It's not what happens at all. This guy now knows how to use magic. So te- te- telepathically, he takes this like fucking buzzsaw, cuts himself loose and just sedates everybody. I don't know. He like kisses that woman and she passes out. <laughs> And then yeah, like, it sucks the air out of her. Again, Freddy Krueger, anybody. <laughs> Part oh, yeah. five. Want to suck face? Yeah. Four, I mean. That's one of those. They both suck. Doesn't matter. It's four. But we take a detour to fucking John Kramer's morgue, and I guess Lubden's there and, like, calls Tammy over the loudspeaker or something, right. and she goes down there. Because she's and, waiting for Scott, yeah. Yeah, but she like lo- he, like, locks her up on a table. He, and, like, points at her, and she falls over. And he like he's, like, going to cut her nose off or something, and Scott's like, don't you cut her nose off, I'll rip off your toes or some shit. Now it's yeah. like a leprechaun fucking showdown. It's a limerick off. It's a limerick <laughs> They're going at it. They're firing them off, and and Tammy gets broken out by Scott, who again now also has magic and easily just do the same thing Lubden did. Points and all the fucking buckles come off her, and uh, they're just kind of going at it with these these Irish uh, one liners. He's got his full use of his magic now. And what the hell does he do to him? Oh no! Oh yeah, Tammy like hits him or hits him with the the medallion. That's what it is, and he like rides away on a gurney like giving him the finger yeah they, they shove it in Lubden's mouth momentarily again you, you would think that would blow him up or something he but gets it does it twice nothing. oh yeah cause, yeah. He, cause he gets it in the mouth in the beginning too with that fucking green Alka-Seltzer so he's like fuck you get away from us if Fazio has your coin go get him he doesn't get a go-kart in this movie he gets no. a gurney full of fucking food no. from the hotel do you know they only did the go-kart in the second movie because he was in like a little car in the first one 
That was the only reason. I mean, I kind of would have jumped to that conclusion myself, but... I mean, it feels a little bit more natural in two, I guess, yeah. for it to be there, but it's not like a cartoony thing. Uh, listen, I'm not necessarily suggesting that. I know I'm like, I've probably made fun of that concept before that they just obviously give him a go-kart. I just think about, well, if he has a vehicle for transportation, it should be the fucking go-kart, not just him with the thumb on the side of the road or teleporting. I think it's kind of funny, though, that he nah. can't just teleport. Even sure. Though, because... Well, it doesn't matter in this one. I was going to say, well, he needs his gold, and then he has his magic, but that's not even a fucking thing in this. Uh, maybe if he used the gold as a proxy, he's got to <laughs> teleport to the gold piece. But no, we don't ever go there with it. Uh, we go to Fazio's show, and he's about to light somebody on fire from the audience <gasps> in his burning beauty routine because he wished- He teased to, that earlier, Because yeah. he wished to be the greatest magician in the world. That's his wish. Yeah, because earlier in the film, they they- they show the whole thing how he's just this washed up magician and it's a bunch of old timers just going there for lunch just bored out of their mind <laughs> while he people does his like show passed out on the table yeah and, and they have these fuck ups constantly and he tries to blame the assistant but now he's got his magic robe he looks like Doctor Strange out there or some shit. full house dude bring yeah. back the fucking chick with the tits I'm, instead of this guy she does fill out that costume <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's got the person from the audience, and I don't even know if we even actually see the end result of this, because Lubden pops out of a box and just snaps his fingers and the whole set changes. Uh, and he's in a costume and they're matching. He's this got is, the cape and he's got like yeah. a little hat on. What Different hat. Why does he give Fazio an ultimatum? Everybody else, he's beaten to death, going straight for the jugular on all these people, but instead he's like, he's like... Oh, Fazio, give me back my coin and you and I'll not hurt you or I won't harm you or whatever. Let's go back to what you've said a couple times already. <laughs> the guy who wrote this didn't see the other movies, so I'm going to say maybe they didn't totally have all their uh, their eyes uh, in a row. or t There's an expression there somewhere I'm fucking up. We didn't need to take the detour to the hospital, man. We just did not yeah. need that. All his T's crossed and I's dotted. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we didn't need all this. And uh, again, the corrupt doctors that are instantly taken out, not killed, but they're corrupt anyway, just because. Or whatever. So Lubden puts Fazio in a fucking box, like saw, saw the lady in half trick. Yeah. And he fucking cuts Fazio in half with a chainsaw. I think they could have played this up for some more comedy, but I guess they're just trying to wrap the film up at this point. I think it's pretty good. Like that gag is good. And when Warwick like splits him in half and he's like, and he like puts his arms up, like, look what I did. Like, that's very funny. I kind of was hoping for the cr the crowd to start clapping, just not getting it. But no, they get it instantly when they see the guts falling out. I, I don't know. I was wishing for a little bit more dark humor there, but it is a very funny scene. I mean, that was the dark humor. No, you're right. You're right. Because it was really cutting him in half. And then they, and they're know, like, yeah, cut him in half. <laughs> Until they see the blood yeah. all over. It's like spraying on this guy in the front's face. And then Scott, now again, full leprechaun essentially comes in with Tammy. Ah, this is real, by the way. This is real. Get this. This guy's a murderer. And this is really sloppy. Because it's like, he's a psycho. Get out of here. That's he's... what I'm saying. Like, if they thought yeah. it was fake, I feel like that line plays into it more because now there's, oh, shit, this is really happening. Instead, yeah. it's like, they already know. There's already panic. People are already getting trampled. It just feels like, well... They're there. They should probably say something. So they leave. So everybody runs out. Now Tammy and Scott are there. Yeah. And he, they're like, you know, he's like, give me the shilling, blah, blah, blah. We've been talking about this the whole fucking thing. He's finally got his shilling back. I got my shilling back. <laughs> he, he has it. He could just leave now. Well, right? now he's pissed. Now, now he wants he's revenge. Now he wants, now he needs to kill Scott or Because they're going to only be one, Tammy. Joe. Yeah, the, yeah, it's like fucking Highlander. He There's pulls some the sword out. There's some fighting in a parking garage. <laughs> There's also some bullshit. Where he's like, "Come to the green side, Scott." And it's like, uh, yeah, kind of. Mm. No, he says that. I know. Yeah. yeah, and then he's like, "I'll give you all my gold, and we can share it together in some kind of se semi homoerotic thing." But everyone, including Tammy, knows he's lying. But yeah. again, they establish how now that he's part leprechaun, he's going to be uh, conflicted. The greed's too much to kind of overcome. But in this instance, again, because Tammy kind of snaps him out of it. He's reaching for the pot. Yeah. She's like, no, you can't do it. Well, she's like, the gold, that's where his power is. The gold, you got to destroy it. And he's got right. like a flamethrower from the magic show. Man, you would need to throw this gold into fucking Mount Doom. <laughs> That's what I'm you, saying. You can't just shoot a flamethrower at it and melt. I, I let alone that they're basically Sam and Frodo having the end <laughs> argument before he walks in. I mean, I don't even know. I guess, again, is Warwick Gollum in this situation? He did bite off a toe earlier. Yeah, but you're missing Goop to Baggins, man. <laughs> He's dead already. Right, he already went across with the elves. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to the other side. Bring back Ian home. 
Please, he could play Gupta. He could he could play, wear the brown face. He's Fuck gonna, it. At that, he's point. gonna be the leprechaun in the next movie. No. He's too old. He's Although dead. I, I would have liked to see uh, that version of Bill. I mean, I know we now have had what's his face for many years playing the character Martin uh, Freeman. Martin Freeman, but Ian Holm. I know, unfortunately, he passed away. But yeah. imagine him coming back versus fucking Warwick in the prime. Oh my god! He puts that ring on. Does Love didn't see him? That's my question. It, maybe you think. I mean, he's. I mean. It, I don't know. Is Loveden working for the Dark Lord? Probably. This is the MDU, and like, just since we're on that thought, uh, I know we're kind of reaching the end of the film, and yeah. we're going to have our final thoughts shortly. But you think if Loveden actually got it in in some the uh, ring, he probably got it. I you mean, think it's in that pot of gold? I think he wears it on his cock. You think so? I, I think that's you know the that extra was a joke I made on the fucking Tony <laughs> show about <laughs> the, the, the yeah the one cock ring to rule them all is because that where it, Sauron be, should have been holding yeah, because it because it gets bigger and smaller and you could put it on any size dick. There you go. That is true. You could put yeah. it on a giant's penis. That's that that is on the urethra <laughs> or. Or a leprechaun. The penis. old shaft. Yeah, but I think that's where he's shillelagh. got it. Yeah. And uh, that's part of the whole jack off situation with oh. the shamrock shapes. It gives him a little extra friction to help uh, splooge inside the starfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also just like kind of hard to get at. Uh, it, it, you squeeze, know. it squeezes the urethra for more distance for shoots. In you fact, think? you want to know how he got out of that guy's penis in Leprechaun 4? Like, he put, actually... like putting your thumb over a garden hose? <laughs> Yes, but also he flicked <laughs> as he got shrunk down and and eaten or whatever the fuck it was in that film. Uh, I forget the semantics, but he gets he, inside he got, that he got guy. gigantic, right? But I'm talking about in the beginning of the film. Oh, when he pisses on him and goes in his dick. That's what it is. Yeah. The thing is, when he was going up the piss stream, he flicked it. We couldn't see because the you know the quality's so <laughs> shitty on the transfer. He flicked the ring onto the guy's penis, but oh, he, he didn't realize it, and gotcha. that's how he stretched his penis. Right. It was I, like a portal. It was some like, kind of it's it was magic. Like, yeah, it's magic. It, was like, it was like Sonic. Sonic's rings, and that's uh, how he gets to the different portals. Yeah. Right, so the reality is that Lupton doesn't teleport. He uses he, the ring. He puts like, the ring on, and he just walks. He's like Sonic. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Uh, some more Lupton lore. We somehow found it here yeah, there it uh, goes. at the end of the Leprechaun 3 review. So he's a, he's a, he is truly uh, John Hurt's cohort. I mean, he probably does know how to actually teleport, so combine that with the ring. There's probably some kind of anti-gravity. He's, he's chaotic evil. Uh, ma- ma- yeah. You know, time is shifting around Lubden constantly. So this has probably got to be one of the most anticlimactic. <laughs> After that ones, setup, yeah. right? I, because like they light the he he shoots the fire on the gold and uh, it 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 fades. It out. destroys it. Question mark. It dissolves. It, it pr- Adobe it, Premiere it, it default, default film transition. dissolves yeah. <laughs> away. Whatever. <laughs> and Lubden is like on fire and he's like floating around <laughs> in the place like Maybe on think fire. Of Dracula. Yeah. And then he just slams down and he's dead. And it looks like they used the uh, dead leprechaun body from the first movie here and I just was l- that. lit that on fire. Which look, it still looks good, but like it's just very anticlimactic to me. It is. Uh, they needed something else. If they're gonna light this thing on fire, I understand. Again, I've said it a few times already. Very small budget. But that was not the way to do that. It's it just feels like you're wrapping it the fuck up. Let's get this done. The problem is in the first movie, he has all well, of those well. cool lighting effects and he like melts and comes back and they throw him down the wheel, they let him on fire, there's a big explosion. The second one, he gets stabbed with the fucking wrought iron through the chest and literally fucking explodes into a million pieces. Yeah, yeah. He explodes a lot in this series. Well, he explodes in four right in the beginning. But in, th- in three, it's just kind of like, oh, he's on fire and he's burned to death, he's dead. Yeah. Okay. Again, maybe they just spent the budget everywhere else. So. They they didn't really think about the final kill. They're like, well, it's the end of the movie. I know people <laughs> want to see something interesting, but we ran out of money. Oh well. <laughs> I mean, I guess I, I I think I think that the maybe Id- I'm giving it too much credit. I, I don't know. The idea was cooler than the execution. Sure. So then Scott and Tammy leave, and now they're in love or something, and they just walk out into the sunset. He's going to school, and she's I don't know what going with him to live in his dorm room with him. I mean, he's got all that money. She's at least now gonna, he's got a hundred thousand dollars. She's at least for the weekend gonna fuck his brains out. After that, who knows? They do have a little bit of a bonding moment over this leprechaun. I would yeah. hope. Uh, I, I don't think it's as serious of a situation as Ragdoll, where a grandma was sacrificed. So if they break <laughs> up, it's not that terrible. No. Uh, but you know, either way, Scott made out like a bandit. He's back to normal. He's no longer uh, bleeding or coming green. This is uh, true. Yeah. So Tammy's very excited about that, and you know. 
We're left to never really find out what happens because, again, now Leprechaun just goes to fucking space. <laughs> and then when he returns, he's in the fucking heart of New York, I guess, or something. He's in the hood, dude. Uh, so, so, so Scott and Tammy, their lives go on. I guess. And uh, it's all left in Vegas, Joe, because we don't talk about what happens in Vegas. What, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, man. Yeah. For sure. So uh, with that being said, <laughs> where are we putting this? Ah, this has got to be in the dumpster. I don't even dislike this film that much. I just think, it, you know, going back to the original question, is this the best Leprechaun sequel? I think two is still. Two is my favorite one. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. Sure. I, I still think I like that first one better, but two is very well put together. There might be some debate for that. I think that might be a little well, it's hard. It's the best sequel. Oh, sequel, What's sure. The best sequel? Sure, sure, sure. Best Leprechaun sequel. Um, But the rest of those sequels, I've kind of already given my thoughts on that over the course of this review and in other episodes. Yeah. So you kind of know where I stand on that. But yeah, this is like, it's good. It's not bad at all. Uh, I wish they did a few things differently. Again, some of those weird casting choices, I just have to point out. It's not that big of a deal to everybody, but it's just, why? Why Gupta? I don't get that one. <laughs> You're so hung up on Gupta. Uh, I mean, we got Caroline Williams and, and Warwick Davis and even the guy that plays Scott. Uh, the rest of the cast kind of are great. I'm the just, pumpkin head connection, you the, forgot to mention Oh, that. God, yeah, the pumpkin. Okay, so... Might as well just go into it Yeah, now. so Scott, and then I'll finish my my uh, final uh, thought on that. But Scott, the guy who plays Scott, was in Pumpkinhead 2. Uh, he was the young version of Judge Dixon, who is the character who actually, along with his friends, creates Pumpkinhead in that movie by killing Tommy, throwing him down, talking about wells, throwing him down that fucking well. The Lubden well. Uh, the Lubden well, uh, where Arachnus was thrown down, the, you know, the bartender's always talking about deep, it. Deep, deep MDU lore. If you don't know what we're talking about, you're going to have to go catch up. <laughs> Check the description of this video for all the linked videos <laughs> yes. where you can get the full scope of the lore. Uh, I meant to mention that earlier, uh, the whole point being that now Lubden and Pumpkinhead have been kind of on this show in this uh, ongoing card game at the bottom of Lubden's well. You know, there's a there's a John Hurt portal you got to go through to get to the card table. Sure. Uh, but it's at the bottom of the well, and he's always playing cards. I don't know if it's text him, hold him, or go fish. We never know with these guys, but uh, <laughs> he's playing with Cumdar, Corpse Fucker, yeah. uh, P Head's always there. They're all kicking it, yeah. Uh, they're kicking it, and you know, the cavalry of characters pop in occasionally yeah. to play a hand or two. Uh, so yeah, of course the MDU is real, Joe. Yes, of course. But with that, with that, we yeah. With, sorry. with all that, I can't forget that. I'm glad you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the pumpkin head connection, the blood wings, uh, the bloodline. Yes. Uh, not to be confused with the Rock and Roman Reigns storyline that I. That's all I really know about. Or it. the Bloodstone, the blood Bleeders. Yeah. Well, right. actually, it does connect to that. Anyway. But with all that nonsense uh, uh, said. Uh, I thought the cinematography in this was really good. The camera work is pretty solid for uh, made for video film. Uh, again, Warwick's great in this. All the acting, generally speaking, is good. And uh, at the risk of repeating myself, I think it's solid, but it's definitely dumpster. It doesn't really, I, I hate to use the expression, it doesn't hold a candle to one and two because I don't think it's that drastically worse. Uh, I just think those first two films are a lot better. Uh, so I would definitely recommend this one, but just no going into it. Unless you really love Vegas, uh, which maybe does something for some people, or this maybe was your first Leprechaun. I know, Joe, you said that, uh, I don't know if you said it in the episode or before we started filming this, that it's a lot of uh, people's favorite. But I wouldn't go that far personally. I could see it, but uh, it's just kind of in the middle for me. This is ranked as the best Leprechaun sequel. And again, like I said in the beginning, it's it's uh, Warwick Davis's favorite. Um, now, this movie is on the shelf for me. Um and I, I put the first through the fourth one on the shelf. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I really don't like Leprechaun in the Hood or Back to the Hood <laughs> or Returns or that other WWE bullshit that doesn't even make sense. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think uh, In the Hood is worse than this film, but I weirdly enjoy it better than uh, this one. Just it's not as it's nowhere near as well made. But I don't. Know, I get a kick out of that. Film. I'll watch this again before I watch In the Hood again. Um, but. Um, you know, two is my favorite. Two, I think that's the best Leprechaun sequel is two. Yeah, if I didn't just say that, I agree. Because it's very, I mean, obviously it's very hard to make a good sequel to like any movie. And I think two does a really good job of that. And again, two is a lot, is has more gore in its two. Yeah. And like there's a good balance of scary and com like a comedy and horror in the it. The balance is there, yeah. Then I think does it a lot better than three. Three, three is like a balls to the wall all of the horror stuff is completely gone and it's all just joke after dark joke after 
sight gag or uh, crazy gore gag or something like that, and limericks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's all it's a lot of dark 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 comedy, and it's mostly that. Like there is no real horror element to the movie anymore. Um, and we see that going through the rest of the series, sure. <laughs> which is fine. Um, and it's not that I don't like it because of that. It's just I I need a little bit more out of my movies, and I'd rather watch one and two. And if I want something totally fucking wacky, I'll go right to four. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. No, I get that. Because four, four is just no holds bars, pulls out all the stops, fucking insanity. And that, that movie's crazy. I love that one. I mean, it's really... That's Yuck. crazy. It's really <laughs> yucking it up in four, which yeah. I really appreciate because it's the fourth sequel by then. You know how many times yeah. can you do the the, the leprechaun thing? But um, yeah, man. It you know what three is just for me personally. It's fine. I didn't I didn't like not enjoy watching it, but it's very middling. It's not the yeah. one I reach for. It's the least. It's the one I forget about the most. Even though mm. it's the big one where it's like, well, that's the Vegas one. You know, right? Like even though you say you you actually dislike some of those other films more you forget about this one yeah it's so in the middle I, I, because i be, again like i said like leprechaun one i think is is truly like the a, the perfect movie of this series leprechaun 2 is my favorite because it still retains the horror stuff there's really there's a really good story in that one with like yeah. his bride and all that stuff and like i just like the way it's shot and filmed it, check out that leprechaun 2 commentary track yeah. and i'll tell you all about it um <laughs> It just feels right, the second one. The third one, it goes full out tongue in cheek. And I don't know, it's okay. Like, like uh, again, like it's 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 just fine. And if I really want the fucking nutty aspect or I need another sequel to watch, I'm going right to four. Yeah, and I just want to add an addendum to that because like I did mention the cinematography is very good in this, but I will say that uh, and this is again not just I said this like ten times already, but the budget, there are definitely some shots. Where you could tell, like maybe they used a different camera, or they didn't have the uh, the A crew on the uh, set that day, or maybe not even the B crew. Again, if they made this movie in a week or two, who am I to really judge? But 95 percent of it looks pretty solid. But every once in a while, you get one of those shots. You're like, all right, yeah, this was made for video. Yeah, but I, but I it's mean, it's not a huge knock. But I guess just to clarify what I said earlier. Yeah, but in the same breath, I think it looks great for the budget that it's at. 100%. I guess that's also I, what I'm, I'm not, saying. I'm not yeah. knocking it in that department. I think yeah. the special effects are great. Warwick's great, of course. Work is the work and Gabe are the constants throughout this whole series that I think keeps it on its feet. If as soon as you take Warwick out of the equation or you take the good effects out of the equation, you're done. You're sunk. You Make a different thing at that point. Just just stop. You know, I mean, as we've seen I, now, I saw Leprechaun Returns. I don't like Leprechaun Returns, but that's my opinion. I, I still gotta watch it. I feel like I've been saying that for like four years on this show. Maybe I'll finally, finally, finally pull the trigger. Just why not? Then I'll know for sure if I like it or not. I mean, no offense to that other little person in the role, but like without Warwick, I mean, you got Mark Holton in it for Christ's sake, and like without Warwick, yeah. it just does not jive. It doesn't work for you. It doesn't yeah. work for me at all. And that's pretty much it. Leprechaun 3, it's fine. I know this is a lot of people's favorites. It's not my favorite. Um, it's a decent sequel. Um, it made a shit ton of money. Uh, yeah. And good for them, but uh, I'm reaching I'm reaching for two. Two's my fave. I guess just on that note, if you haven't already, let us know in the comments. Like, is this your favorite? What is your favorite uh, Leprechaun sequel? Yeah, because I'm just genuinely curious uh, what people think. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's Leprechaun 3. Yeah. And again, um, we were talking about the first Leprechaun. Um, definitely, if you haven't watched the first one in a while, definitely give that a spin because it's really excellent. It's a perfect blend of horror and comedy. And it's just really, there's a lot of love in that first movie. And again, I can't stress enough, if you haven't checked this out, are you? this is the first time hearing about it and you're really interested in filmmaking or the Leprechaun movie and how it was made and kind of the hurdles that Mark Jones kind of gone went through with Trimark and Vidmark and, and even about uh, Ken Odland and again Mark Holton and Jennifer Aniston and Warwick Davis and Gabe Bartalos, all that stuff they go he goes into it. Uh, B. Harrison Smith's uh, "I Need Me Gold," the making of the movie Leprechaun. Check it out. It's not a, it's not a ton of money and it's it's a really great read and it's a breeze to read. I think I read it in like a day and a oh. half <laughs> to do for the show. Sure, I mean total. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And yeah, if you really feel like it. Fire up Leprechaun Three. Maybe that's your favorite. I don't know. I'm reaching for one and two and four. That's my that's my lineup. And of course, with the uh, our our Lord and Savior Rawhead Rex, the, the that's the stack. And even uh, I'll I'll watch a very unlucky Leprechaun before I watch Leprechaun Three again. You're having like a full blown like Ireland land like marathon. Oh, like, dude. lined up. 
<laughs> Dude, I look forward to traveling there. I look forward to St. Patrick's Day every year because Julie and I we make we do our soda bread. Sure. We do our corned beef and cabbage. We get some Guinness. We get some red breast, and we just watch Leprechaun movies and Rawhead and all that stuff all day. And it's a it's a blast. It's just fun. It's cozy. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, and yeah. that reminds me, I need to get my soda bread out of the freezer and defrost that some bitch. Oh, you, you get, didn't like, bring me any fucking soda bread. Well. It might have already been in there longer than it should have, so let's eat it before it gets any staler. Uh, future Sean, when you see this edited episode, make sure you ate that by now. And don't forget next year to bring me some of that. I, I will, I will. I need Miss Mary soda bread, dude. Yes. It's so good. Made by my mom, absolutely. But yeah, if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. You can get an ad-free audio version of the show for only $2 a month. And if you sign up for the 5 or $10 tiers, you can get commentary tracks, mini-sodes, and live watch-alongs we do with you guys. And uh, it's always a really good time. And you also get some other goodies with that. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out and help support your favorite show. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed, hit that button now. Uh, it really does help get us out into more eyeballs, eardrums, and everything in between. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please leave us that five stars and possibly a review. We really do appreciate it. Those reviews are really important to us. Um, it's worth more than you going to Patreon or you buying stuff from the store. They really help the show grow. So if you can leave a review, please do that. But if you want to keep on, up on the Movie Dumpster Boys' uh, whereabouts, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on all of your social media platforms, or you can go to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and you can find out where we're going to be at what events. We got one coming up at Tapes from the Crypt at the Philomoca in Philadelphia, PA on 420. We're going to be watching Heavyweights, and then there's going to be a live Q&A session with Sean Wise. Also, we brought up in the beginning of the episode, and I'm not sure if we have any left, but if you go over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com, you can get some of the sweet uh, raw head red hot sauce or some of this movie dumpster slime hot sauce. We might have some other flavors, possibly a, a ghost shark with blueberry in it. It's very good. They're very good. Uh, super small batch, super limited. If they're still there, go check it out. We just wanted to let you know if you'd missed it. And definitely drink them like this. So that's it. That's Leprechaun 3 from 1995, directed by Brian Trenchard Smith. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster and happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs>